face. <laughs> and I've gone live. Yay. That Late little joke is going to be lost you. on everyone. Gone live late because of you, Tyler. Oh, damn. Well, yeah. to make up for it, I'm going to order dinner right now so that I've eaten dinner late and I'll stay up later. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were going to be like, I'm going to order you dinner, and I was going to be like, oh. I mean, I can if you want. Yeah. You just have to give me your address live on stream. <laughs> Alright, it's uh, P. Sherman, 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. Yeah, the address of anyone who lives in Australia, right? Like legally. It's the only it's the only Australian address. Makes post really difficult to collect. No, it what it actually is is we give them the actual address and you just give all your shit to them and tell it it's for and they're like, Ah oh, that's Aretha, that's for that that cunt down in New South Wales. Got it. <laughs> Go, I'll send it to him. Get I'll get it to him. Course, course. I'm gonna call you out in your bluff and get you to order me breakfast. That'd be kind of fun. I mean, wait, I have your address. Wait, no. I have your old address. Yeah, you have my old address. I actually delete. I'll just delete that pin so I don't mistake it. Is it my and old try address? Try to send you something as a surprise. Well, I already deleted the pin, so. <laughs> You can't double check. <laughs> and it's a be it'd be a really dangerous game to get you to repeat it because you know if it isn't the old address. I love this pin in our homosexuals group chat where I share the theory the theory that Sino and Razor are related as if it's like some out there wild theory. Like, <laughs> no, it's, like it's... I'm clearly the only person to have ever thought of this. In the homosexuals chat? Yeah. Because I wanted to say it, like, ages ago. So I want it pinned and, like, time-stamped. So that, like, if it does come out, then... Like, just letting you know, I'm not just retroactively saying that I called this shit, but oh, I did call yeah, it. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, no I but see also, it, like... Yeah. It, now that it's just kind of like, I think a lot of people just kind of assume it's true, even if Hoyo won't say so. So it's kind of funny that it's like, <laughs> like I'm acting like it's, it's some huge revelation that like the man doesn't want you to know, but this is what I think. It's like, nah, ev everyone thinks that. What you could do, do to it, Tyler, is donate mm -hmm. to my Ko-Fi by typing exclamation point tip in the chat. Just the tip. And if you did that, I could buy myself breakfast with that. And no just addresses. Just the tip or tips? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just tip. Just the tip? <sighs> oh my god, Tyler. The joke. I'll, I'll keep doing it until you acknowledge it. It's exclamation point tip. Just the tip? Here, I'll even type it for you. It's gonna be a really embarrassingly long time to type exclamation <laughs> point two because <laughs> I am tired. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go to the bathroom and order my food, and I'll be right back. There's someone honking outside my window. Anyway. Before you go to the bathroom, real quick. You know what I really want to do? Yeah. I want to have like you know when you like watch the news. And there's like those newscast like B side stories that are like rolling across the bottom of the screen that are not important yeah. enough to like get screen time, but still the news want to report on it. I want to have mm -hmm. like that happen in my stream every like five minutes, and like I want the majority of them to be like complete nonsense and like references to fucking shit that we've done or said, and then like some of them mm -hmm. can also be like subscribe if you feel like or donate or join the dick like you know mm -hmm. like a little because it'd be a way to get a little bit of promotion what if, as well what if exclamation point quote instead of posting it in the chat 
brought up that little news ticker. And the carts could also just the yeah, the carts could also just scroll up through that randomly as well, I suppose. But like, yeah, it'd be really. I'd love to have like a little news ticker. I think that'd be fun. It'd be kind of funny, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'll be right back. And then it was just me and you again. Chat. How is everyone? I haven't posted my stream link, so there is literally fucking no one here. Let's post the stream link in a play in a bunch of places. Let's give my stream to people. No PS5, no rest mode! Ba -ba. I am hungry though. I wonder if I should do anything about that.
Ah, Gesundheit. Wait, did they hear me say that? Hey yo. What's up? What's up? What? What do you want? I, I didn't do anything! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is quite possibly the most suspicious <laughs> opener you could have started with. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, like, choking on a dick right now? Is that what's happening? <laughs> no! You're like, I hope Tyler didn't hear me conspiring to try and suck a dick on stream without him noticing. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Damn it, I can't believe you noticed. No, it's not that. Nothing. Legitimately nothing. I'm just <laughs> creating drama, Tyler. <laughs> You did it. Congrats. <laughs> there is literally nothing happening. <laughs> All I know, man, is that I showed up. I heard you say... Wait, did he hear me say that? 
and then I was like, what's up? And you immediately got <laughs> defensive. <laughs> like, exaggerated defensive. Like, you were just daring me to ask about it. Yeah. <laughs> no, the thing I thought, because, like, I, I, I did yell something before I said, did you hear me say that? that was directed at you and I was like wondering if you'd heard me said it because after I yelled it I immediately heard movement from the microphone I was like oh. <laughs> no but I was the like you probably heard was me coming up the stairs which is still a good like 10 feet away from my head no there, it so. was movement immediately followed by hi like you ah, well, yeah I didn't hear you then. what what I was yelling <laughs> was like, I'm sitting here humming the music, and like, the music had looped for like a third time, so I was like, da 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 where the fuck is Tyler?! <laughs> <laughs> we're like, where the fuck is Tyler?! And then the mic was like, Poof. and I'm like, oh my god, did he, did he hear me? <laughs> awesome, well, I'm here. Hi. 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 Anyway, that's the stream. <laughs> I hope you all yeah. liked it. <laughs> Just gonna go ahead and put us on end. Do not. I don't think I have one for end anymore. I only think I have main and BRB. I didn't see the point of end anymore. Because I don't need you, like, going... I'm not gonna forget to move to my ending screen, you know? Mm -hmm. The way I forget to switch between main and BRB. Right. Not that you're ever right. here in the chat anymore to be that fucking back line. Because I'm yeah, not streaming well. anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> also a factor. But also, because ten minutes late... <laughs> I'm like... I don't know what you want me to say. Sorry? Mm, anything but that. Fucking! Alright, whatever. Fucking, uh, whatever. I didn't say, ah, yeah. oh, whatever, I said, alright, whatever, but also that was not me saying what you should say. You just said you don't know what you want me to say. That doesn't mean that the next thing I said was an answer to that. Congrats on identifying the loophole that was meant to be the punchline of that statement. Look, when you dissect a frog, you kill it, okay? Anyway, what happened last time in Final no, Fantasy No, when 16? you vivisect a frog, you kill it. If you dissect something, it's already dead. Off to a great start. I'm the victim here. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> no, I've got to hold on to the character. Don't make me laugh. <laughs> Man, your energy picks up real quick when you drink mother and eat a chocolate egg. <laughs> That's my breakfast, unless I, uh, you know, get some breakfast. Oh, right. You were waiting for I, me to... I wasn't waiting... For, no, I was... That wasn't no, what didn't. I was waiting for. I'm joking about that. Don't actually do that. Oh, uh, where is the co... Oh, that's right here. I don't have to... Tyler, this, you don't actually have to... Do Tyler, we're not... Is this a bit or are you about to send me money to fucking eat food on stream? Five hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Make it monthly. Uh, you know what? I'll take it. Give me five hundred dollars every month. I'll like think mm -hmm. at least I'll I'll be at I was about to make a fucking Rick and Morty reference. I've been watching Rick and Morty. I finished it. In fact, I finished the latest season, and I like yeah, I I really liked it. And I couldn't tell the difference at all in the voice actor. Whoever the new voice actor. Oh wait, no, that's not happening yet. That's season seven. Um, isn't the voice actor like the creator of the show? But she ordered me to uh, yeah, I think so. So it is going to be interesting to see what happens with Rick and Morty going on where in season like seven. Because like, like it's a fucking it's Family not... Guy situation where the creator does like fifteen voices on the show. 
Yeah, because it, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting, right? Like, the creator has a very specific style of humor and, and like, like writing cadence that I don't know if uh, another person, even if they can do the Rick and Morty voice. Which can, I'm like, sure lots of people can, because impressions are just something that a lot of people can do. Yeah, I can kind of do the Morty voice. Like, it's not, Morty's not super hard of a voice to do. Honestly. Mm -hmm. But, um... But I, I really did like it. I also noticed that, like, the charges against him got dropped. I haven't been paying attention. I didn't know it was charges. I thought he just got, like, cancelled. Well, he did. He got cancelled because there were charges against him for assaulting his wife, but they got dropped. But I don't know oh, if they got I, dropped. I just thought it was, like... I, I meant I just thought it was, like... No, it wasn't just v vague internet charges. It was, like... Like, the same thing that happened to the voice actor for Crow in Ruby. Uh, he got, like, char- like, it, not even charged. People just, on the internet, just accused him of pedophilia. And, yeah. like, yeah, that like, that ruined his career. Like, like, the accusations later came out to be false, but... It, even just the, the accusations aro alone ruined his career. Or at least ruined his job as a voice actor for Ruby. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I'm not actually taking a stance on the Justin Roiland situation, because for all we know, it's it's really easy. F like, it, it, the amount of times charges get dropped in the court of law when they are actually very much happening, especially when they are charges against an extremely famous and prolific actor. Uh, like... Rich and Ray probably have very... Very strong lawyers. Oh yeah, like, and a lot of court. Yeah, the fucking creator Rick and Morty, obviously, right? Like, there's a there's a really good chance he actually did fucking do it. Um, but yeah, I've been, I've finished up the season six, and also a chance that he didn't, and they just no. Yeah, that's that's where it gets fucky wucky, right? Because like, on one hand, we want to make sure that like we give men the chance to be innocent in court, otherwise we get more Amber Heard and Johnny Depp situations, right? But on the other hand, he could also just be a man who abused his fucking wife. You know? Uh -huh. And then got away with it. And that would fucking suck. So, like, I'm not gonna take a stand on this either way, because there is no right answer here. Um, but yeah, I finished season six, and it was really good. And, like, it's really funny. I looked up when Season 7 was coming out. It's literally airing right now on Adult Swim. <laughs> like, it's, what like, the, the, the timing. Not literally the second, but, like, the episodes are coming out right now, starting from, like, the 15th of this month. Mm. Like, every week. Adult Swim. Yeah, I've never... I, I don't have, like, conventional TV, so I'd have no idea how to watch it. Adult. Um, yeah, what happened previously in Final Fantasy 16? Or are you still messing around with the tip page? Oh, I closed it. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, what happened? I checked my bank account and I was like, uh, <laughs> maybe. Maybe we'll wait on this. Maybe we'll wait on a recurring $500 monthly subscription. Yeah. I'm still, I still got like $200 that I gotta pay the commissioner who's working on my Fremenet pick. So. Why not just send that? Because we agreed on like a payment stage in stages upon like levels of completion, basically. I mean, I understand, and it's good to have that level of caution, but do you not trust them? No, I do. I, I just. I kind of got do the it. feeling that they were. I, I I got the feeling that they were one of those who was very hesitant to accept large sums of cash all at once. Oh, so like me. Like one of those who's like, yeah, one of those who's like, uh, you don't need to pay me that much. Uh, it's okay. Sh uh, should I should so. I out you on stream, oh, okay. Tyler, for for what you did during the drive recovery process? I mean, if you want to, <laughs> and if you want to put out there. Yeah. How much of a sugar daddy I actually am for yeah, you. Yeah, we like joke <laughs> about it. Like, 
during the process of trying to recover the files in the old drive and it failed completely completely failed we did not get a single file back a hundred percent of the money of this transaction was wasted the first one that you sent paid for the new drive so it wasn't wasted but a hundred percent of the second and yeah we're already saying that there's two separate transactions lol um but like i was like you know there's so there's software that literally the people in computer shops use uh but like uh, you can only extract file up to 500 megabytes of files that are professional license and like like we lost like the uh, like five or six vods i'd say um maybe even seven or eight actually because farm has 16 is turning out to be a really long game um and each of those vods are about 20 to 30 gigabytes <laughs> yeah they're like 500 megabytes wouldn't really cut it so i was like oh my god this fu fuck this program i can't believe that like it's like free, but like only 500 megabytes. And they ask, and, and the license is $150. And then I swear to fucking shit, like in five minutes, it was in my PayPal. <laughs> it was yeah. just like, pop. Like, it like, I, I, like, you're insane. And what's worse <laughs> is you wasted every fucking dollar because not a single thing could be recovered. Oh, it wasn't a waste. It was. Well, because I, I feel like if I, yeah, if I hadn't, I would have always been thinking like, oh yeah, because we wouldn't be able to recover anything, and I would always been like, if I had just given him the money to to be able to afford that, maybe we could have gotten it. Yeah, right. And I feel like even if you like wouldn't expect me to pay you for that, you'd still be thinking like, if I just had the money to do that, maybe we could have recovered something. And but like what's, now, and, it, and what's never... more is both the scan of the drive and the drive itself would still physically be here. So it wouldn't even be a thing that I would think every now and then as if it's a past event. They, they would be like, I could still put the money in it. And probably that mm -hmm. temptation would eventually pull me and I would drop $180 on it and then, you know, it wouldn't work. Yeah. And I suppose between someone who has a, a 9 to 5 and someone who doesn't, it's probably better for you to spend money on, on like on something like that than me. Because, yeah. boy, do I not have a lot of money through Centrelink. Again, exclamation point tip if you feel like donating. Um, <laughs> I'm com I was comfortable dropping that, that bout. So yeah. I'm, I'm fine. Now, if let's say we do it again when the Genshin resets happen, yeah? <laughs> yeah i have to see if i can afford to get all the boys that i want because <laughs> uh, i need to get i need to get nuvia and then i need to get reesley and his weapon you need to get nuvale and you need to get rothsley risley rothsley i apparently. fucking refuse it's rothsley <laughs> Worcester sauce. Yeah, it's horse on. Wash your ass in the shower. <laughs> it's Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> Which we're, is true. We're, 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 cro 40K. we're crossing the streams with that one. What <laughs> happened in the previous thing of Final Fantasy 16, Tyler? Right. In the previous thing, yeah. uh, we did a long ass recap of everything that happened. Yeah, because and we then... lost all the VODs. Right. And then... Let me tell you about that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. I suppose you've got uh... To Shut the fuck up. Right. Dion. Uh, we got Dion. He's He was at our base. Yeah. And so is Joshua, and they were both recovering. Uh, and so was Clive. Clive was also recovering. Um, and... We had basically, like, all got together and we finally, like, had everyone in one room to, like, really, like, put, lay down on the table all the information that we have, right? Yeah. About Ultima, about the Emperor, about everything that happened. Um, and finally, like, Clive and Joshua were, like, properly, like, reunited. Um, and, uh, we sort of left the prince there because he was, like, he was like we unconscious like, yeah, basically like, yeah and we were like he'll be fine um so we left 
um, Clive, Joshua, and Torgal, and I'm sure I'm not forgetting anyone. Um, You're not. We went, we went to, I forget which town we went to, but we went to meet up with Yote. Um, and it was revealed that Yote is like uh, a Tabor. member of... We went to Tabor. Yeah. And it was revealed that Yote is a member of uh, basically the Phoenix Secret Service. And she's been, like, uh, working in the shadows to uncover information that would help. And she's the one who, well, sh not she specifically, but, like, the or that order of people are the ones who knew about Ultima and told him about Ultima. Yep. So they're off looking for more information about Ultima. And, um... The Undying. And the Undying, yeah, that's the order. Um, and... I don't remember how we get to this point, but I know that we had mid working, finishing up the ship, and we were going to get on the ship to go. So, so the free city right? of Canva was under attack. On our way to it, right. we passed through Tabor, which is where we met Yote and the Undying members. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Um. Well, this chest is just unguarded. And then. Was it we we saved? Did we save Canver? Or no, was it... everyone uh, died. Every single uh, person was uh, turned. And remember when that happened? Uh, fucking Mister. Oh right. Uh, yeah. The 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 twink. Yep. The uh Barnabas's little pet twink. Yep. Um, he was there, and he revealed that the the Akash the Akashic that were coming up there were different than regular Kashuk because they were, like, divine or something like that. Um, and we fought him. We had a little boss fight. We, we defeated him. We uh, outright then, killed him. But it's alright, because yeah. he came back later. Yeah, it's fine. He came back a lot. Um, yeah. Oh, a lot of him came back. Yeah. Um, we'll get back to that. <laughs> uh, we killed him, Asterisk. And then Barnabas came out, and basically uh, confronted us one-handed without using his powers and absolutely trounced us. Yeah. So that was fun. Literally just picked like, up a random bloody rusty sword off. Of, us. Literally just picked up a random bloody rusty sword off the road and was like, I'm going to use this. Put his hand behind his back. Yeah. Just like, blocked us. Yeah. Just bent us over the tail table and railed us. So that was interesting yeah um you know what doesn't and... doesn't one piece do that thing with its like fucking swordsman character like the dude who can like hold three swords no, his, 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 like uh, yeah i think in one of the really early episodes he's like fighting a nemesis and the nemesis is like you're too weak for me to even use my proper sword and so he takes out this little literal one inch long dagger from the, like, his necklace and holds him off even though Fucking Zora has like three swords that he's using. I like how you use a mount and length of swords fight. as an indicator of skill. Anyway! As if Zoro having three swords makes him a better swordsman. <laughs> Zoro having three swords makes him more likely to land a fucking hit on a, on a guy with a tiny little inch long knife, though. I mean, unless you're an anime. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, um, yeah, Barnabas trounces us, uh, and in our escape, like, Josh basically, Joshua basically grabs us. I keep wanting to call him Josh. Because it's such a, it's such a, like, modern name that I just want to, like, give him a boy. modern nickname. Joshy Josh boy. grabs us and, like, drags us away, and Jill, uh, goes full prime to like fend off Barnabas to give us the opportunity to escape and we're just like unfortunately yeah, however she lives she does live uh as dramatic as it would be for her to die in that moment would her character finally have amounted to something if she died it I feel like it would have uh, been consistent for Barnabas's character and goals for him to have killed her in that moment. Or and any also, moment afterwards. Or any moment afterwards. 
and also it would have like also like really is like but had kept the stakes for the fight with Barnabas consistent. Yeah. I'm accepting a side quest. This guy wants me to hunt a creature. Alright, cool. That's literally it. But yeah. Um, Barnabas, we, we fuck off back to our hideaway uh, to lick our wounds. And Barnabas also fucks off. Did you? We, like, we, you. I want to like, even though it was just a detail, I want to point out that in that exchange, Barnabas used his ability that chops anything in half, including the ocean and the gravity that pulls the ocean in. And uh, he chopped like through us, but was so meticulous with the ability that he chopped enough of our sinews to basically kill us, but we were still alive. Like, like, yeah. He, he, like that's the way the characters describe. Very particular about not killing us. Yeah, he set his sword to stun. <laughs> um, these undying quests, uh, like Cyril's quest on you, actually might want to pay attention to, because uh, uh, I have to get my food then. So okay, go on. I'll just sit here and do fucking nothing. Be right back. <laughs> Continue the recap. Yeah. All right. Why not? Um. All right. So Barnabas chops us in too nearly, uh, and we wake up outside midship in the free cities of Canva, uh, with Jill having been kidnapped. Uh, Mid is like, well, our ship can catch up to his ship, because he's in the Anyeha, which is like supposedly the fastest ship ever made before the Enterprise was made. And so uh, as we're waiting for, waiting for Mid to get the final touches on her ship done, the uh more akashic show up and after akashic lots of clones a little twink uh of um of sletnia or gunnir or whatever the fuck is he called his like little clone is called show up uh like full-on like copies of him and uh we all we go fight them off and then the boat has to like leave without us and we do the the stereotypical, like, running across the dock and jumping on the leaving boat with the main character jumping last and barely grabbing onto the edge of the boat. Like, you, you, if you've consumed any media that happens to have a fucking fast ship escape scene, you've seen this scene before. Because uh, they're all the same. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the, the Enterprise catches up with the Anyeha. Uh, Clive jumps onto it to save Jill, but Barnabas... Uh, does his floaty, ominous, evil guy thing, uh, and appears on the Enterprise and engages Joshua. And, uh, uh, eventually they both go fully prime. Uh, he injures Joshua and wins that fight. And meanwhile, Clive does rescue Jill. Uh, but then he, like, divides the ocean. That, that thing I was saying. He, like, does his sword slice into the ocean and, like, cuts, like, parts the sea, but also, like... Like he parts the sea in like the biblical sense. Like he he makes the waves like 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 he separates them and he prevents them from crashing down. Um, uh, Mid is able to steer the Enterprise like away, uh, <clears throat> so it doesn't fall down in the gap. But the Anyeha does with Clive and Jill on it, and then he goes down to confront Clive. We have a second fight where he fucking absolutely trances us, but this time we actually do get like. Uh, like halfway through his health bar before he does like a big unbeatable move and he does the same thing he just chops us but doesn't kill us um not as badly though because apparently this time the only thing that really requires us to like fully heal from that is just a like a fucking sex scene with Jill because that's what happens we wind up on the beach afterwards and meet like Clive and Jill are naked they they, they do the sex they like this this game has sex in it there's sex Jill gives us her ice powers voluntarily, um, reminding us that we don't have to go it alone, even though we're a solo protagonist in a video game. And we have arrived back at the hideout. At this point, nothing else interesting has really happened. Um, the main story quest is to talk to Vivian, because when is the main story quest not to talk to Vivian? Hi. Hi. And yeah. I've returned. Hi, returned. Yep. 
Are you like watching? Can I unpause? Yeah, I'm watching. Okay. And I might assist you with this day, perhaps. My brother said that your order was helping him with his quest to uncover Ultima's origins. Have you learned anything of note since last we spoke? Little and less, I regret to report. I see. Be assured, however, that we will not rest until the truth is known. Even now, our archaeologians scour ruins in every corner of the realm for traces of Ultima's touch. Follow An archaeologist? Just a archaeologist. <laughs> An archaeologist that's also a... 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 We're too cool to say archaeologists. Because we'll use the name Joshua for one of our characters, but not archaeologist. Dating back as far as Phoenix Gate. Indeed. Ultima's Thors are oft sighted among the remnants of the fallen civilization. As if Haven't we seen, like, several murals secrets that were, like, that. weird? No. Methods be of interest, my lord. Mayhap it would please you to observe some of our number at work. Would that be possible? Of course. A survey has been conducted not far from here. Perchance you are familiar with Kretov. A small hamlet built around a fallen airship. I was due to visit my colleagues there to collect their preliminary findings. Oh boy, Tyler. If you Guess what? consent to do so in my stead. Yeah. Pizza Hut's bringing back the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle crossover with their vibrant green mayonnaise. <laughs> they did it before. It didn't. It didn't taste bad because it's fucking mayonnaise, right? Like on a pizza that where mayonnaise is a complimentary like topping, like it's good. It's just also vibrant fucking green. <laughs> it's. Hmm. It doesn't look pleasant. I'll send you a picture. Please do. The idea of mayonnaise on pizza is disgusting to me as it is. Really? Fair enough. It's like really, really good on like burger themed pizzas, if that makes sense. Because it like. Oh. It tastes really good uh, for those. Add a mutagen ooze. Yeah. It's so not appealing as a thing. But, like, it still tastes good, because it's just mayonnaise. Right. It's just hard to get past... The green. The, yeah, the green. Uh, it's great. Anyway. That they would be honored to relate any discoveries they have made to you directly. All right. Yeah. All right. We'll go and meet with them. They will be most gratified, I am sure. Might I suggest you take the road through Titan's Wake? It will lead you straight to the village after but a short walk. Thank you. I will. I wish you a safe journey, my lord. May the Firebird's flames burn ever in your heart. Yeah. Alright. His questline is interesting because it, like, tries to pose moral quandaries about, like... A village built around an airship. Sounds like another lost wing. I hope the inhabitants are just as friendly. Uh, I keep on pressing the wrong fucking button about stuff like uh, like religious freedom and like like bodily autonomy and stuff like that. Like, like it's it's interesting. That's all. Um, there's also a quest up here. So this is funny. There's a quest up here. I'm not gonna play it all, but this is a guy who's too old to climb stairs, and he wants me to go to these. Th Shut up! He wants me to go to these like three, like dome-shaped structures across uh like uh this like town. 
in order to like read shit on them and then give it back to him because he's like a scholar. Um, ah. Except, what did I just climb to get up here? Stairs. Yeah. So, like... I can climb a maximum of 15 stairs a day. I use them to get up here, and then I just fall down the stairs to get home. <laughs> That's gotta be painful. <laughs> What's that copy pa paste about the fucking like having the the paper skin and glass bones <laughs> every night you lie it's, in bed it's and tell my heart attack put me to sleep? It's a SpongeBob thing. That's SpongeBob. <laughs> what is it though? Uh, SpongeBob paper skin and glass bones. was born with glass bones and paper skin. Every morning I break my legs and every afternoon I break my arms. At night I lie awake in agony until my heart attacks put me to sleep. <laughs> one like equals one prayer. That would be a funny thing to have as a newscast like a news feed. A, what, is, what did you call it again? A news sticker. News sticker. That would be a that would be a funny thing to have as a news sticker, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Just copy paste, different copy paste. Yeah. You could have the a missile one go through. Yeah, I think there'd be loads of fun in that. Um, we do have to remember these because the game is gonna ask us to like repeat back some of the key phrases of these. Right. If you want, you can like take screen caps. <laughs> Can you read it to me? What's it say? Oh, fine. I'll read it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> the guardians of Crystal first stones of Tabor. No yeah, but, but the but. Uh, but. Sacred hold thy noble blood till ends the mother's labor. Okay. Uh, the labor rhymes with Tabor. Why won't the sky go back to hell? Also, two of them aren't even upstairs. He already went up the stairs to read two of them. And he just... <laughs> two of them aren't upstairs. Uh... Man. Wanders of the golden plains, lay your roots in stone. With pride, recall thy noble past and make these rocks a home. Man, I love. That's sweet. Golden plains, my one. What is sweet? It's a like a. It's like a a, a warming an sentiment. What is what? What's warming about it? It's just an origin story. Ooh, seems cool. Just for this tiny little village. Make the rocks a home. Children of the hunters, now tillers of the land, reap her promised blessings and give her praise. Give praise her grace. Oh, Almost must have settled here in Tabor. I should yeah. speak to the old scholar before I forget everything I've read. No, oh, he knows us. That's like wait. The engravings were in good repair, uh, considering their age. What? Oh, what the he was, like, 20 feet away from that one. Mm-hmm. I'm aware. Yep. Ooh. What I could have carried him there. For myself. Oh, come. Oh, don't cheese me now. What did you learn of this place and its people? Uh, let's start with the engraving to the south, shall we? Oh, what did it say? The great good Moogle Guardians. Guardians of the Crystal. Guardians of the Crystal. The first stones of Tabor. This is why I didn't really Sacred need you to read them out. 
Till ends the mother's labor. I'm pretty sure that was it. Fascinating. It would seem the founders of this city were descendants of those fallen charged with protecting the mother crystals. But oh, whatever could have driven the guardians so far from their sacred charges, I wonder. The engraving to the north is next, I think. Which one is it? Wanderers of the Golden Plains. Wanderers of the Golden Plains, lay your roots in stone. With pride recall thy noble past and make these rocks a home. Or, I think that was it, at least. No doubt you're right. Don't doubt me, Clive. I know what the fuck I'm doing. Customs and Tabor, its guardian roots could never account for. This is proving most enlightening. Now, for the final stone. Children of the hunters, now tillers of the land. Children of the hunters, now tillers of the land. Reap her promised blessing and praise her gracious hand. That's all three. Sounds surprised. Oh, shit, I remember that actually. Peoples, the final piece of the puzzle. Three engravings. One for each of the three peoples to have settled Tabor in ancient times. Guardians of the Mother Crystal, wanderers from across the plains, and last but certainly not least, hunters turned farmers. Little wonder it was so difficult to trace the roots of Tabor's culture. Those roots reached. I mean, apparently it was on stones that were sitting right there. Nonetheless, one cannot help but wonder why this fact is not better known among scholars, given that the stones yeah. stand here for all to see. Yep. Too many stairs, perhaps. <laughs> Too many by far. Here, yeah, and thank you. <laughs> Actually, I don't blame him for not going the 20 feet to see that one, given the amount of strain and effort it sounded like he had to go through to <laughs> give you some coin. <laughs> yeah, a single coin. See, one single goblin coin. <laughs> just turns out he's incredibly uh fucking lazy cuz he he got there he went... you go sunny have a candy from my bucket <laughs> careful how you pack can you do the Any voice that game grumps do the when they do like the old person who's like got one foot in the grave I don't remember what voice they do. I haven't actually watched any Game Grumps in, like, months. It's very, very breathy. I don't remember, unfortunately. I, I know. I, I haven't watched Game Grumps in, like, months. Tyler, I've been, like, really, really focused on watching, uh, like, these ma- I've been watching these, uh, I'm gonna shout them out for my zero viewer stream. Um, <laughs> I actually don't know how many viewers are on my stream. I keep my viewer account hidden on purpose because, uh, it would distract me. To look at the zero all day. Um, <laughs> I've been watching someone called the Golden Bolt uh, because I've been in a Ratchet and Clank uh, craze. I've been like playing the old ones for achievements and uh, like that mm -hmm. achievement hunting website I've told you about quite a few times. Right. Um, I've been playing all the old ones for the achievements. Like I, I just recently finished one and I've started doing two now. Um, and while I've been playing them, I've been watching all these retrospectives on old Ratchet and Clank games as well. Um, and like, I am astounded by how much of a fucking sheep I am. I'm actually going to talk about this, right? In the Ratchet and Clank yeah. games, uh, there's like this very, very strong prevailing opinion that the old PS2 games are good and nothing afterwards has ever been any good at all. Like, mm -hmm. toxically strong. Like, a lot of people haven't yeah. even played shit like Tools of Destruction or A Crack in Time. Uh... And, and are just, like, writing them off as terrible. And I was 100% on board with that. I was like, yep, yeah, Gladiator was the last good game. Um, I'm astounded by how incorrect that is. Just, like, fundamentally incorrect. <laughs> how much I've written off, like, four or five whole games as objectively bad because I listened to the rest of the fucking uh, audience and their opinion. 
and like it culminated in the fact that I even started playing the most recent one because it's free if you have like the game pass for PlayStation right now and I've like not been paying any attention to it and I only played it for like an hour and stopped and it's like the uh like got some of the best story and gameplay yet of the Ratchet and Clank games like Aww. and I've just been like I have not been giving it the time and energy it deserves are you gonna start over? yeah I absolutely am I've only played for like an hour or so anyway like I feel genuinely bad because like these are games I love and I feel like I've been made to be bitter about them Almost like the Sonic franchise, except the fans won and converted me from a Sonic fan to not a Sonic fan about the new games. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like that's... I've been having issues with... Uh, not me personally, but like just like seeing other people have problems with like the fandom for things and being like, yo... That means you shouldn't like the thing itself. It. Yeah. Like, the Undertale fandom well, is actually a big example of that, I think. I just don't interact with fandom a lot. Just, I've... I just... I just never have, really. Mm -hmm. But, like, like especially, I just don't care now. Like, I'm, I'm too old for this shit. But, like, I have some some people, like, the, the Ben Mikazor uh, Discord that I'm in, uh, they... Some of them complain so much about like, like what really like Mika and are like so upset all the time about how the fandom treats Mika. And like, I am so detached from fandom. I did not know that Mika was getting a lot of hate. I just don't care. Mika's getting a lot I of like hate? Him. Me neither. What the fuck? Apparently. Apparently. They're like constantly complaining about how much hate they see Mika getting. And I'm like, stop looking block at it. it. <laughs> block it. Just block him. Block it. Stop! Stop! You don't have to. You don't have to see it. I saw. I saw. It. I'm gonna. This is gonna be really dumb of me to once again quote Rick and Morty on this, but they did make this really interesting point that humanity has sort of spent most of its evolution like raising conflict and like rewarding conflict. You know what I mean? And it sort of has, hasn't it? Right. So like, I think it's kind of natural in a really fucked up way. Right. There's a lot of things. I think this reaction that I have is like I'm sort of like stepping away away from myself and like realizing this is probably because I'm autistic. <laughs> like this sort of detachment I have, where it's like I don't like you like, just like, like the when thing. I right. Well, also like I just have like a detachment in general. Because I'm finding that, like, I get frustrated when I listen to some, like, uh, am I, like, am I the asshole or Reddit if relationship advice things. When people are like, um, like, I just don't under, I wish my mother wouldn't act this way, but it's like, she's my mom, what can I possibly do about it? I'm like, cut her off. Stop answering her calls. I know, right? It, like, <laughs> it's like, you know what, this actually might be the reason why. It's really easy. This, <laughs> this might be the reason why autistic people get a lot of, uh, like, uh, hate for like being thought of as cold blooded because it's just really easy for us to like detach from a situation that fucking sucks, you know? Right, it's like, she, like she's she's a bad person cut her off, it doesn't matter like it's really interesting because like every single time I talk to my like grandparents I, I went and I visited my grandparent recently, she's like like over 90 barely capable it like took her le legitimately like a minute and a half to walk down the hallway like like skin is like falling off of her kind of like saggy but she still felt the need to make a comment about how i don't talk to my dad anymore right like she still felt the need to make it in that state of like bodily dysfunction and disrepair like Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's it's really, really wild to see how much people care about other people's relationships and other people's thoughts and other people's opinions. Like, and... if, if my mom had said to me, had like said half of the shit some of these people's parents have like said to them or their like spouses or whatever, if my mom had said half of that shit to me, I'd just hang up and I just wouldn't answer her calls. Yeah. I'd just stop. 
Like, I just don't, like, it's not worth it. <laughs> that was the creature I was going to hunt for the guy, by the way. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I just mean, I think that's also, like, part of my detachment from the fandom. It's like, I don't, it's like, I don't need to be a part of the fandom. I'm just going to, like, stick to the parts that I care about. I would I argue enjoy. that you make your own fandom in a lot of situations because you create your own fan work and you create your own ships rather than building on other people's ships. Because, like, the Mika Razor Bennett ship is a ship that's accepted by a lot of other people, but I don't think anyone else really ships put, like, slaps Frimene in there as well. Mm hmm And actually, Mika, Razor, and Beta isn't, like, super, like, a, like, in general, if you, if you have a, like, any ship beyond two people is, like, you're not gonna find a lot of content. Yeah, that's you where shit gets really good amount of content. Yeah, you can, you can find a lot of content for, like, Mika and Razor, or, like, Razor and Bennett, and even some for Mika and Bennett. Mika and Bennett, like, are not as popular as, like, Mika and Razor. Mm hmm And you can now find some for Remini and Mika, but not really all of the all four of them. Yeah. Or even like three of them. Yeah. So. I wonder if there's another discussion we can have at some point about the prolific uh like the 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 way like uh poly relationships have become more and more prolific uh in the past few years because like it's it's really starting to become like a normal uh like compared to like when I was young. I want to say the the joke, which is that it's economic. It is fucking because economic. Because it takes like five people to afford an apartment now. Right, it is fucking economic. <laughs> it is absolutely. <laughs> but I would argue in this all in this day where we're also monogamous um, in this economy. Yeah, right. I'd also argue that um, when we're all starting to learn uh, that we all have a bit of neurodivergency in us, and we all have needs that are a little bit more acute and a little bit more specific. Uh, mm -hmm. than just, like, than, than, the, the, than the things you can get from one person that more people are also opening up to it. And, like, I just think it's cool. I think it's cool. Mm -hmm. We're all becoming a bunch of sluts. Anyway, this is the continuation of someone <laughs> showing Blackthorn things. No! Stop already. showing him things! No. This charmer ain't letting anyone through. Remember the ring? Oh, the gate's closed. I Two didn't. sworders. No one's allowed in without his say so. Not that I'd have let you in anyway. Why is this guy no sounds control. like clinically depressed? You go home. Well, look, he came from a village of Blackthorns. <laughs> you changed a bit, have you, Snotty? No. Snotty. No one it isn't. Can like that. It's so Blackthorn. <gasps> Long time no see, eh? What the hell are you doing here? Well, it was meant to be a surprise, but since you are so nicely. I'm here to see Zoltan, you fucking numbskull. Now let us through. Wow. All right. Well, All Just... right. So I'm going to show you something, man. Don't go you start always got anything. a bit fussy when people Jeez. showed you things. All right. People show each other things here all the time. We all hate it. For the first punch. That good enough for you. Anyway, I am getting myself food. Okay. I'm Go doing my food. ASL lesson. And you, today. and you just and that's you're not fast. paying for it, which sucks, but that's fine. There we go. No ASO good. I forgot what that meant. Age six location. I come from a different part of the internet than you, Tyler. So this is Dravoshed. No, that's also what it What's means to me, on, but like there? I'm taking a specifically an ASL course right now, so. If you're taking that course, are you focusing on the quest where, where Blackthorn sees things? Yeah, I'm listening. Okay. It's a visual thing, it's for deaf people. Oh. Oh, American Sign Language. Yeah. Hey, you ain't backing out now, are you? There's a river of bad blood between me and the chief. But if someone can build me a bridge, then I'll cross it. All right. I'll see what I can do. I appreciate it. It'll be near the forge in the hill. It was <laughs> our masters. Yeah, it's because I made an order, so my phone is like, 
Food. We've accepted that you pressed order. We've accepted the order. The restaurant has accepted your order. Like, yes, just I don't I don't need the 3001 updates. Um, how long does it take for you to do that thing? Because I don't particularly want to sit here in absolute silence and I have an idea of what we can do in between the quests. Well, depending on whether or not I can answer this damn question, it shouldn't take me more than like a minute. But I can't remember what this sign is. Well. Hotter. Hotter, damn it. Those miserable flames wouldn't melt butter, let alone iron. Pardon the intrusion. I'm looking for the chief. That'd be me. It's a pleasure to meet you. Oh. I'll bet it is. Keep the gates closed, I tell him. Well done, Snotty. You're not welcome here. Get out. Before things turn nasty. Blackthorn's here. What did you say? He's travelled a long way to see you. <sighs> yes, has he? He's waiting. Down by the gates. Then I suggest you take him with you when you leave. Wow. Didn't you apprentice together? So what if we did? Fuck. We're You're showing nowhere. me a thing right now, and I hate that. Flames are next to bloody useless. We're never going to be able to fire up the forges unless we can find some new crystals. Flames, you say? So do me a favor and piss off. Oh, and if you're struggling to find your way out, ask Blackthorn. That prick knows exactly where the exit is. He's not wanted here. And neither are you. He just wanted to leave because everyone kept on showing him things, man. <laughs> All right. I'm going. Well, that went well. Yeah. So yeah, this blacksmith village is in rubble because, like, all the fire crystals that would usually be mined from the mother crystals that we've been destroying are no longer capable of being mined from them because we've been destroying them. Right, yeah, that is, um... Are we gonna save those bearers that are... You know, nah. like the whole point of the thing that we do? Nah. As a personal favor to him, yes. At least he didn't beat about the bush. There'll be no talking him round. Not after what I did. Which is what exactly? <laughs> if we're to help, yeah, was, we need to know. Probably should have told us this we'll before. Turn the against you. I left. That's no that's literally it. He just Content. left. The burden of leadership our dying master dropped in our laps. <laughs> All of it. There are two kinds of smiths in this world, you see. My kind. Who are in it for the love of the craft? Who labour in a single piece from dawn to dusk to get it just right? Artists. And the other kind, who are in it for different reasons. People like Zoltan, whose work is quick and cheap. Salesmen. Kind of a few hundred blades reap the profit and divvy it out among themselves. There wasn't a single day we weren't each other's throats. And bit by bit, people started taking sides. You would have torn Dravoj in half had it gone on. So. I left. You didn't have to do that. Sultan's a better chief than I would have been. His way of doing things kept food on people's tables. The Ravosh prospered without me and my lofty ideals getting in the road. Until the crystals run out at any rate. Without magic to fire the furnaces, this place is as good as dead. It depends on how you look at it. Fire, you say? There's got to be other ways of making fire. We manage it in the Deadlands. Thanks to Sid's ingenuity, yeah. He saw all of this coming. New crystals. Did he seriously not know how to make fire without crystals? Spent years coming up with ways of what fire? They know how to make fire. Where there's a will, there's a way. Fire and a furnace are two different things. Two very, very yeah, different but, like, things. You know, people in the actual Middle Ages made furnaces without magic crystals, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't think they have that technology yet. 
I mean, would we have made furnaces without, uh, if we had the power of magic rocks that just gave us that? I mean... Or magic people that gave us that. Well, no, the magic people clearly aren't working. That, by the way, by the way, right? Like, we, we, I think at one point when I was like, yeah, bearers are only very weak at their power, and you're like, where's the proof in that? This is like a good example of the proof of that. Three bearers are not okay, capable of creating a fire hot enough to melt metal. You know what I mean? Mm. So, like, you know. Fair, I suppose. What I'm trying to say is that it's not your fault. You couldn't have predicted this. It doesn't matter whose fault it is. I don't want to be the great smith alive just because I happen to be the last. <laughs> Clive. Drabosh won't last long without his furnaces. So, do you think it's time we shared Sid's bellows with the world? The way I see it, it's your decision to make. Hold on, Black. I feel like that's Mid's decision to make, Sid made actually. For us. They give us an edge over the rest. And you'd be throwing it away. All right. Do it. This place was your home. I won't abandon it to its fate. Sid's creations were never meant to be hoarded. It was only ever a matter of time before we shared them. Let this be another step on the road to freeing Valisthea from the prison of the Crystal's blessing. Dravorst will show the world that it's possible. Wouldn't you agree, August? When you put it that way... Of course. It's like hearing Sid speak from beyond the grave. Thank you, Clive. Blackthorn the shows them the there. furnace and they're all like, no, we heart. can never make a furnace like that. Yeah, yeah so collective well, blacksmiths just start crying. Exactly a one -man job. Yeah. Do us a favor and round up anyone strong enough to have a brick or two with you, August. Uh, all right then. And I've got a job for you too, Clive. Finding me some salamanders. I think it's I think I can skip at this point, because he's just like make give me stuff for the bellows. Yeah. Alright. Are you done with your thing? What? Your thing. Oh. I got distracted because I was listening. It was My parents need to buy a new car. It was explicitly the one thing that we asked you to not do, is to get distracted with other things. Mm -hmm. Well, you're asking a lot of someone with ADHD. Yeah. This really oh, is my yeah, fault, isn't fault. it? My dad is mid. No, Mid's dad is Sid. Mm -hmm. If we're going to do this, we we'll need help. Then we'll have to find it, and fast. Clive, your timing is impeccable. It just so happens that right at this very moment, we're in need of someone with your talents. And what talents would those be? Why, your fearlessness? And your skill with a blade. I'm listening. Well, as I'm sure you're aware, I don't even remember what this quest is about, that's why I'm listening. Over the Republic, so too did a wave of chaos and confusion. Are we supposed to know who Eloise is? Yeah. I don't remember. Infected. Many of the capital's bearers have lost their Yeah. What do you mean? I don't remember her. When Goots lost the ticket? Oh right. Yeah. yeah, this is the village that, yeah, Eloise is another person who buys, uh, bearers. Ah. Okay. And this is her knight friend, who I think is a bearer? Or something? It's like a brother or something. Something like that. The masters, or taken the opportunity to flee them. None remain free for long, of course. Most find themselves under the protection of the fist before they get far. But the army too is in disarray, 
and finds itself unable to provide for its new charges, which means it has been looking to sell. And you've been looking to buy, to make sure these masterless bearers remain that way. Precisely. It's the perfect opportunity to free dozens more, and for an attractive price, no less. So where does my skill with a blade come in? Though we may have the funds to oh, these okay. Bearers, we have nowhere to house them. Okay, we've got to clear out an old uh, abandoned village that's full of monsters, uh, so that when she buys, so the bearers have some place to live. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. For what it's worth, I don't even remember if her transaction goes through. I actually think it doesn't. So well, there's also that as well. Well, clearing a whole village of monsters couldn't hurt anyway. Yeah, right. Well, it's abandoned now, but yeah. Um, yeah, I, hurry up and do your things, because I want to, like, I want to do the the thing that we said. We're reading out Reddit posts and shit and reacting to them. Right. And you said it would literally only take I you a minute, that. and it has been, like, literally... Like ten. That's a sign for where. This is focus. Stop asking me questions about facial expressions. I'm autistic. Yes. What does this out. face mean? Well, it means they either hate me and want me to die, or uh, that they just woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Bus where? I don't know. This must have been a nice yeah, nice that's a que that's an appropriate answer to the question. My parents will come here. Um, here. Why? Let's just take our house. Yeah. That means drop. That means from. You see how much I'm learning? Yeah. Um. Yeah, you're learning as much as we're not having fun on stream together. I want my food. <laughs> Adasha has been picked to to get my food. Oh boy, Tyler! Yay! Um, my house will. Syntax is very strange in ASL. That's the one thing I'm noticing. The syntax in a lot of languages is extremely weird, though. Have you, like, do you know anything about French? <laughs> no. Yeah. You want to talk about syntax like for that, languages? That sentence, that sentence, which is grammatically correct in ASL, was, uh, my sister come will. And it's like That's all of them. Okay. Buddy, I don't really yeah. need to know what you know about your sister doing, but good for you, <laughs> I guess. Okay, I finished. Okay. You want me to read read Reddit stuff now? Yeah, why don't you pull up a Reddit post? It'd be fun. Okay. I'm opening up my actual Reddit. <laughs> oh. Because <laughs> I could, I could go, I guess I follow an Instagram that's just toxic Reddit where they curate for like posters that are like ones that are like, oh, this Those person is shitty. I trust well, hold on. I, go that. Consideration. I shall. I think Theodore is like. Oh, yeah. 
I think um I think I can summarize this. She's like she's had a different like dream that she had to give up in order to do the thing that she's doing with bearers or some shit like this. Mm. Um and Theodore is like torn between morals of helping bearers and like the desire to like get his sister to be free the way that she freed him because remember he was like a bearer slave as well. Right. I think that's like the conflict here. I don't really care. This is not I if I don't remember it it can't have been interesting. Yes, yeah, but probably. I know the last quest in Eloise's chain is very interesting though. Like I'll be I'll be going through that. to talk the man i was watching earlier the one speaking to my sister he represents the silver peak consortium it's one of the bigger trading houses i don't think i've heard of them well every trader in darmekia has they operate across the length and breadth of the republic and they're still expanding yeah they've been trying to get a look and judging by her reaction earlier i and you'd rather she didn't I would rather she did what makes her happy. And I would never deny her such an opportunity. Eloise saved me from slavery. Yeah, Eloise see. Was not the life, the life she wanted or she deserved. She deserves. I won't let her give up on her dreams again for my... She freed me from my bonds. And she must be freed from hers in turn. You're a good man, Theo. I have always been grateful for what... And I want to repay the favor. But each time an opportunity to do just that... She loves you. And I love her. Yeah, okay. Which is why I want this time to be different. Yep, I get the gist. Oh, yep. he immediately has another quest. Hello. Ah, Clive. You'll be pleased to know that the negotiations are progressing well. That is good news. Yes. Our comrade in Randala has just sent word that the contract should be signed very soon. But I still have much and more to prepare. It's a huge undertaking moving this many bearers at once. You couldn't do me a quick favor, could you? What is it this time? I don't have much of a choice. Nothing like that. I just need you to go over to the caravans and ask El how long we have until the bearers arrive. Find out exactly how much faster right. I need to get. All right. Thanks, Clive. That's easy. Um. Yeah, I don't really care where you source them from. I only, I didn't even really care if you've read them already or not because I don't think the entertainment of reading. Uh the yeah the i decided fiction. that i'm gonna read them from reddit because i'm going more for am i the asshole posts and the ones that i read from there sometimes are am i the asshole but also like tend to have a lot of like abuse in them so it's just and it'll be more fun for both of us if i haven't read it so i think it'll be more fun for Don't me anyway yourself, this is their fault not yours uh oh uh, but... what happened all right Something we're gonna have to fix with violence. Bonnie came to give me a message from our intermediary. The talks with the Republican army have reached an agreement with the Silver Peak Consortium instead. Though prices have fallen of late, we deliberately offered above the going rate to try and deter other. But the consortium offered double what we did, and the army jumped at the chance. So she wasn't able to buy the bearers because the group of people who she's trying to like become a part of, because that's her dream, outbid her. Oh. None at all. L. Uh, I saw Von. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to not skip these cutscenes outright because I know some of this stuff is interesting, and I know the ending is really interesting. But I thought we were the only ones the fist was speaking to about the. Be How did the consortium? It's not so surprising. This isn't over. The consortium will have to sell these bearers eventually. I'm going to Randall. Alone. Are you offering to be? How kind. Meet me at the checkpoint. You go to Cashlock, Theo. Even if I failed, someone needs to prepare the place and keep. Oh, and that's okay. Well. All right. Cool. It looks like I'm following. We're meeting the Silver Peak Consortium. Who've been? You'll never join them after this, surely. No, she said that she means to stay with us. Then. I can't say. You have to trust her. You're right. 
And if hell's off fighting for the court, so I bid you fair. I'll gather my men and leave for Cashlock. All right. To and see I'll do my best. All right. To Randalar then. And better not keep Eloise waiting. All right. Uh, go for it. Yeah. Do whatever it is you want, um, is what I was saying. Like, you can... You can read fresh ones, or you can read old ones. Like, it doesn't matter to... To me. I'll read a title and see if it's interesting enough for you to want to go into it. So, I, female 21, cheated on my boyfriend, male 23, uh, with the girl he wanted us to have a threesome with. How do I go from here? Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm intrigued, but, like... Why did you have to pick a cheating one as the first one, Tyler? Literally, literally the first one on my feed. The The context is that I'm more of a... For, I, I've got, like, more reasons to forgive cheating than you do. Like, for the stream. The context is, like... Like, we've talked about, like, people we both know or people that either of us know cheating, and you are, like, very immediately unforgiving of it. It's like, if you cheated, you're mm -hmm. an arsehole, full stop. No forgiveness, etc., yeah. etc. Whereas I, like, I'm okay with that being the case, but, like, I think if people have got a good reason, then it's okay. I think if you've got a good reason for cheating, then you've got a better reason to just leave. Hmm. We've talked about this, though, right? Yeah. Um. But go am I on. the asshole for making my wife pay half of everything? No, no, no. I, I'm interested to see the cheating one. Like, I just, like, realized that that's a spicy one for us as the first one. Cheating comes up a lot in these sorts of things. Yeah. So we wouldn't have been able to avoid it forever. Yeah. Okay, me, female 21, and my boyfriend, uh, 23, went out for drinks Wednesday. He's recently been talking about want, uh, wanting to have a threesome with another girl. I'm bi, but I'm monogamous. I told him I'd be fine to try... Well, apparently not monogamous enough. <laughs> oh my god, Tyler. I told him I'd be fine to try it just once to please him, but we didn't plan when. So we went out clubbing and he hit it up with a girl. I wasn't expecting it, but he basically made out with her and introduced her to me. It was super awkward. Oh, she hold very on. very nice and cute. If he made out with her already... Oh, we'll, we'll see where this goes. This is Crawford. Uh, she was very nice and cute, and we were all drunk, so I ended up making out with her as well. Okay. My boyfriend presented the idea of a threesome to her, and she was down. She followed us home, we continued drinking for a bit, and she ended up very wasted. Like, we were chilling in the sofa, and she was already half asleep, slash close to passing out and slurring her words. My boyfriend tried to kiss her and stuff, but she wasn't doing anything back. I had yeah. to go get between them to stop him, and he got upset with me. He was also quite drunk still. I told him he sleeps on the sofa tonight. Helped the girl to our bedroom. We have a big bed, so I didn't feel weird sleeping there with her, but we ended up cuddling. LOL. Morning after, woke up with her in my arms. Talked to her a bit about the night before. She asked if anything happened and that she was sorry for getting so drunk, etc. And pillow talk was so good, we ended up sleeping together. So basically, I cheated on my boyfriend. I don't think he noticed slash hurt us, and he was pretty much passed out the whole day. But how do I go from here? I'm very uncomfortable with the fact that he tried to take advantage of her, uh, like trying to kiss her and touch her while she was way too drunk. And also, I cheated on my boyfriend with the girl he wanted, quote unquote. I feel so bad, and I haven't told him yet, and we haven't really spoken about it at all. This is my first real relationship that I'm trying to navigate, and he's never tried to take advantage of me, but the fact that he tried it with her makes me so nauseous. Because what if I'm too drunk one day? I never get that drunk, but what if? And he tries to have sex with me while I'm the brink of passing out. Just need some insights for somebody on the outside, please. Like, is this a dead end? Everyone's the asshole. Immediately. Like, she doesn't have a good enough reason to everyone, cheat. Like, I... Everyone but the, but the drunk girl. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. Well... If, no, 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 I don't think she is. No, she's fine. She went into it. I, I, my, my thought, my thought was she knows that the girl she was fucking had a boyfriend, but also both her and the boyfriend suggested a threesome like the night before. 
So I would I would think she's within her rights to think that they have an open relationship. Yeah, that dialogue is fuzzy and, and not th- question that. Yeah, that dialogue is fuzzy and yeah, she's not the asshole. Uh, both of them are. Yeah, like so. holy fuck, he's gonna like. Oh, yeah, this girl's... he's he's oh. got some creep vibes. Yeah, he's he's. Hmm. But that is and... like, but she like yeah like I I there are some things that I'll forgive cheating for, but the it's not that the many. pillow talk was so good you just had to fuck her right then. Oh my god, those bedroom yeah. eyes. Ugh. Yeah, they're good <laughs> enough to get through whatever hangover you both would have been experiencing at the time because you had just woken up from a night of heavy drinking. Yeah. No, that's uh, uh, that's not. First, the 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 highest comment here is, dude, everyone here in this post, including you, just ain't it. Yeah, now that's uh, like really shitty for the boyfriend to want to have taken a, a advantage of a of an extremely drunk girl, but like, yeah, I would say he's definitely more of the asshole here. Really? Like if we're ranking assholes. Okay, so maybe you aren't as strongly thought opinioned about cheating as I thought. Then. Oh no, I'm not saying I'm not saying she's like only a little. I'm still saying she's like super much super an asshole for cheating, but like trying to assault someone who's drunk is just much higher on that bar for me. Yeah. Alright. Uh, if I can make it to this quest trigger in time, and hopefully it doesn't start combat, because <laughs> that'll be interesting. <laughs> Y'all should break up, TBH. Not even just because of this, but the fact that you ever find yourself in this situation in the first place. Alright. I'm going to start this dialogue and then walk away to go get my food. I'll be right back. Okay. I hope I didn't keep you waiting. Did you arrange to speak with a consortium? Here they are now. You wish to consult with me? I did. It's about the bearers you recently purchased from the Fist. We had all but finished making arrangements to buy them ourselves. And then you stepped into the fray. You misunderstand. The consortium had an interest in purchasing them from the very first. It was only our regard for you that kept us from bidding. But your hesitancy in accepting our offer to you suggested that the regard was not mutual. And so we resumed our business. I did not hesitate. I am simply not inclined to make such decisions without first giving them due consideration. But what is done is done. Come then. How much do you want for them? Alas, you are too late yet again. We rarely take on such unconventional merchandise without a purchaser in mind. The bearers belong to him now. Who is your buyer? A trader from across the water. A most demanding fellow, if it's any consolation. He insisted the bearers be fed, dressed, even given their own bunks for the voyage over. That's what you get when you deal with continental types. I wouldn't know. Oh yes, the culture on the continent is quite different to ours. They pay good money for bearers not fit for the knacker's yard, and treat them like kings. But as long as they pay... That does sound... unusual. No matter, then. If they've already left our shores, there's little that can be done. Allow me to withdraw my interest. And with it, my interest in joining your organization. My associates will be sorry to hear that. What did I miss? Um, the quest you've already done? Yeah, but what happened? I'm sorry. Able to save them. Um, okay, I guess that's what happened. <laughs> we weren't able to save them. The Silver Peak Consortium did intend to buy those bearers before I did. Their representative hinted at a possible purchase when he came to recruit me. I feigned interest in joining them in the hope he might be encouraged to tell me more. And he did just that. As soon as he left, I sent my own offer to Randall Arp. So you never... No. 
I entertained the Consortium's proposal solely so I could learn more about those bearers. But I was a fool to think they wouldn't find out. I knew exactly who I was dealing with. You tried. I did. And if what he said was true, the bearers are to be well treated. Which is something, at least. A well treated so slave is still a slave. I wanted so badly to see them freed. Eloise! Eloise! Word from Cashlock. The village is under attack. A pack of beasts have come down from the mountains, and there's a dragon at its head. Theo and the others are trying to hold them off as best they can, but the odds are against them. They need help, and fast. Theo! I'll go on ahead. Thank you, Clive. I'll gather some men and join you there. Just... make sure he's safe. Oh no! Anyway, the panic music stops and we're gonna leisurely jog there. Coming. What happened? Tyler? Hmm? I was talking to you? Sorry, I just missed the thing you said. I said, anyway, the panic music stopped and we're just gonna leisurely jog there. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Uh, did you say anything else about that post while I was gone? I doubt it, because I think we've said everything we need to. No, because I was listening to the yeah. what they, they were saying in the dialogue. Alright, well, I guess the next one then, yeah? I, I was going to ask if you wanted me to read more comments, or if you wanted me to find a on to new post. I don't know, what do you think? Hmm. Uh. I think it'd be more interesting in an Am I the Asshole post to see what other people's judgments are. But like, if it's just like a relationship advice post, and it's like, eh, whatever. Most of these people are going to be saying break up. Yeah. Most of the people in like Am I the Asshole posts are going to be saying break up, but, you know. I mean, they kind of should though. <laughs> yeah, they should definitely break up. She's got to earn up to it. She's got to be truthful, but they're going to break up. Right. I like how people are always like, oh, Reddit's always quick on the the breakup train. It's like, yeah, because if you're at the point where you're asking Reddit for advice in your relationship, you probably should break up. Yeah. Like, sometimes the solution is adult conversation, but, like, a lot of the times it's just break up. Oh! Yeah, okay, no, never mind. No Reddit post. Yeah, I, I figured as much. Oh, boy. Better than that. Toggle with me. Uh oh. That can't be good, huh? Definitely not. Man, if only we could go a little bit faster. Thank you. <laughs> Did you really need to pick up those three desert roses? I didn't have to stop for it. It's funny to imagine in the universe, though. You're like, we have to go to Theodore! <laughs> yeah, right. the Saint Bonnet in the North Beach Coast. Where are you, Theo? Well, you're not in an area flooded with ether yet, Clive. Damn. Only you could do that in Genshin when the fucking ocean it summons its stupid fucking swoopers. Right? Yeah. Then again, we both have Scarabill. At this point, Ocean, it should never be a problem. Yeah. Uh oh, these enemies are a Kashuk. Damn it. The ether's too thick. These creatures. 
branches have already turned. <laughs> this can't be good, okay, Taylor. Definitely. I'm just playing with one hand, I hope you realize. Because I'm eating. Oh. I'm just doing I'm the glad you clarified. Yeah. Because the auto combat ring. <laughs> Go, Joel. Theodore before that dragon does. Wow, you haven't even asked what I got there. Some desert roses? Looks like it's found me. What'd you get? This thing's turned as well. This isn't going to be. Um, easy. do you know what loaded fries are over there? Yes. Loaded with what though? Loaded with what? Yeah. No, what did you say? This Loaded with what, though? Oh, you literally said loaded with what, though? Like you were asking? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's barbecue sauce, mayonnaise, and like bacon bits and cheese. Really, really fucking good. And I really like this place, but the past couple of times I've gotten it, the bacon has been like, not crispy. But this time it really is. It's really good. Hmm. I actually don't like crispy bacon. I don't in I like all it. other contexts. Like like having a whole piece of bacon, I prefer it like like cooked enough so that it's cooked, but floppy. Mm. But with bits, I like them crispy. Um, this fight will take a hot minute, and it's not really interesting. If you want, while we're doing it, you can read another. Yeah. I'll read, uh, Am I the Asgore for making my wife pay half of everything? Yeah. We go, we, do we want to do prejudgments? Uh, prejudgment based purely on the title? Yeah, because based purely on the title, no. Yeah, I'd say no. Throw away because my wife knows my Reddit account. Yeah. I... If your wife knows your Reddit account and is a Redditor and it's popular, she's gonna see the post. It doesn't matter if it's a throwaway. Well, she might not follow Am I the Asshole. Uh, like, I'm only seeing because I follow the Am I the Asshole subreddit. Mm. Uh throw away um i 39 male recently got a raise at work i'm now making well over double what my wife 37 female makes at her job never mind not i've always anymore. i've always made about double uh we live pretty comfortably rent but have two cars and can buy whatever we need including luxury items like gaming consoles tvs etc we don't go on vacation or spend foolishly we split everything 50 50 and have our own bank accounts she gives me her share of the rent of every month and I pay. Ooh. If I pay for something like a hotel, she gives me money for her half. Recently, the subject of her paying less came up. She suggested that we each pay an equal percentage of our earnings towards rent and household utilities. Uh, E.g., we each pay 30% of our salary towards rent and utilities. She says she's been using her credit cards to pay for things she can't afford rent plus utilities and groceries on her salary and they are close to max. She's never mentioned this, and I don't think I should be held responsible for her inability to manage money. We chose our place together, and she should pick something she could afford better, not make me pay more in the future because she is now struggling, as she puts it. I work hard for my money, and I'm putting away savings to use as a down payment on a house in the future. I already don't go on big vacations or expensive outings, as I know she can't afford her half. 
she's angry with me and says I'm financially abusing her, I think I'm justified in keeping my money for me. I buy her nice things here and there, occasionally will pay for dinner, and it's more than a lot of husbands do. By the asshole to make my wife pay her fair share of things. Absolutely you are, my guy. <laughs> like, you treat her like she's some a fucking roommate. mooch roommate you live with. Yeah. She's your fucking wife. You're supposed to be, like, it's not my responsibility, she can't pay her rent. She's your wife. It's supposed to be a partnership. Like, you rent the house together. Me and Brayden actually have a very similar situation. Brayden makes a lot more than I do because they have a full-time job and I'm on Centrelink. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes they pick up the slack for me when I can't. And I try to pay them back when I can. But like, there's just the understanding that they are in a higher economical class than I am. Mm -hmm. And because there's that understanding, they're like, yeah, I can, I can help with like food groceries sometimes. And it works really well. I mean, I'm saying that it works really well as someone who benefits from dating someone who's got more got money. Job, yeah. yeah. But I would also do the same, and have done the same when I'm the person who made more money than my partner. <laughs> Here's... You're, you're the asshole times 10,000. Your wife? Are you sure you're not talking about a roommate you can barely stand? You do understand that when you get married, her money is yours and yours is hers. That's, You're a family unit now. That's not true. That one I disagree with. Right, I understand separate accounts, but the 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 like caveat to that is that you have separate accounts for yourself, but also a shared account for shared expenses because you are a unit. Yeah, I think the husband should contribute more because they can. Right. And especially because the wife can't. But right. I don't think that everything he earns is hers and everything she earns is his. I disagree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, you're just letting her struggle because of some completely wrecked idea of equity that you have. This is borderline, if not obvious, financial abuse. I hope this poor woman gets so sick of your bullshit that she divorces you, demands alimony, and meets some wonderful guy who understands what a marriage and partnership is truly about. Ugh. And there's dis and there's Reddit going straight to divorce again. Yeah. Like, see, in this case, it's a bit extreme. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you want to go forward and watch the? Rest you can. Of the we can do a couple more comments if you want, because I'm just enjoying eating this food. You're the asshole, and frankly, quite disgusting. Finances should be even on what someone makes, especially when split. She is your wife slash partner, not a roommate. Marriage and partnership is coming is the coming together and helping each other out, not pushing one down. It's not a transaction, mate. It's a union of one, not yours and mine. It's an us. I feel terribly for your wife, if you can even call her that, given how you treat her. And yes, you are abusing her financially. Maybe read up on it sometimes. Abuse comes in many forms, and I'm sure this isn't the only way you are demonstrating it. I love this one right to the point. Do you love her or not? Jesus fucking Christ. Mm. I always find it funny that Reddit does this thing where they, like, jump to other conclusions. Like, they like he, they just suggest that he's abusing her in other ways, right? Mm -hmm. That, to me, is always really extreme. And, like, feels unfounded. Right. Like, I can imagine a situation I where think someone... they just I think they just meant that you're probably demonstrating financial abuse in other ways. Oh. I don't know. I don't think so. Alright, I'm gonna unpause. It's still a bit of a, a reach, but... Yeah. Reddit does that a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Clive? <laughs> Theodore. You had me worried for... No, he's not a Kashyyyk. Don't... Don't do that. We have to get you out of here. No... Theo! I... think it might be a little too late... for that. No... Vera or no... there's only so much ether a man can take. And that Drake... Just wouldn't let me leave. 
You have my thanks, Sid, for finishing what I could not. For keeping Elle's dream. No, yo. Oh no, she's there. You shouldn't be in the ether, lady. He's turned. And so will you. She's not in it yet. It was difficult to tell the border. Ah, oh, man. Goodbye. The fact that he can still think while he's turned does throw our mass murder of all Ashic people into perspective, doesn't it? No! No! Oh, fuck. Are you genuinely upset? I thought you didn't even remember these characters. I didn't, but like, I he didn't deserve that. There are worse people who deserve that. Smash cut to their mum. See, I respected her for that, because that's the one good thing she's done this whole game. <laughs> sort of like how people say that, like, uh, you, the best you. thing Hitler did was kill Hitler. Yeah. Know. That was true bravery he showed. Leading the dragon away from the village like that. His first instinct was always to protect people. To put others' well-being before his own. And now he's gone. Because I sent him to that place against his will. It wasn't against his will. He was ready to do whatever it took to show you he could stand on his own. So that you would finally be free to live your own life. To live my own life? He never could come to terms with the choice I made. What exactly happened? You once told me Theo was the first bearer you ever helped. We grew up in Canva. We were born to one of the great trading houses. And I was chosen to inherit the family business. I had my father's head for figures, you see. Theo did not. While I studied the art of commerce, he played at soldiers instead. A late bloomer, in more ways than one. For unlike most bearers, it wasn't until his 15th summer that his powers awakened. My parents tried to drive him out of the house and into the care of the constables. Before they could, I took him into mine. Theo told me something else. He clearly admired your devotion to the cause of freeing others like him from slavery. But he said you deserved a better life than this. He wanted to free you from what he called your bonds, just as you freed him from his. I would be lying if I said I had not wondered from time to time how much easier my life might have been if I had allowed Theo to be taken and devoted myself to the family business instead. I have never regretted the decision I made. 
being with my brother meant more to me than tradition or reputation. I only had to look at him to remind myself of that night and the choice I made and the fact that I would make the same choice again in a heartbeat. He was never a burden. How could he even think that? If anything, I was the one who weighed him down. You weren't Eloise. He said to himself that he had always been grateful to you for saving him. And that he wanted to repay you by letting you live the life you were denied. Which you already said. Neither you nor Theo weighed each other down. You loved one another. You did whatever was necessary to continue living your lives together. And you always would have. You're right. All I ever wanted. All I ever did. It was so we could be together. Oh, Theo. Why did you have to... <laughs> There's a few moments in this game where the voice acting is so good. Better than any other Final Fantasy. Mm -hmm. And I will say this is one of them. Yeah. I know Theo wanted me to move on. But I'm staying here at the Crimson Caravans to continue our work. We can make a difference here. We can help people. Save them. I need nothing more from life than that. So I'll carry on doing what we do. Ensuring that goods, people... Bearers get where they need to be. Bringing smiles to people's faces, just like we always have. And to Theo's. Wherever he is. This is the life I have chosen. The life I will always choose. I've made a choice of my own. To continue helping you however I can. Whenever you need it. Thank you, Clyde. Let's go Just on together, I'm not then. in a life-threatening situation. To Theodore. And I have time to check in. Which is becoming rare and rare this time, actually. We did it! Oh. I believe that is Eloise's, uh, Eloise's last quest. When they give us the signboard of their shop, it's generally the last quest in their little chain. Anyway. Why don't we skip straight to another quest uh, giver that you really like? I was just going to read one more comment from this thing because it, it's, not going to it's be very easy one uh, in an entire republic. <laughs> it sort of neatly sums the everything up. I think it's very... What was the word I was thinking of? Poignant. Reasonable, I think. Like the most, um, uh, you're, you're the asshole. Fair share is totally subjective, not necessarily 50-50. Your wife's suggestion is not necessarily unfair. I share everything with my wife. We both contribute whatever we can. We don't have any fixed arrangements. We work as a team. Each their own, but I would not be able to share my life with someone I have to keep a tab with. Which I think is very reasonable. <laughs> I've yeah, actually met a couple are. like that. Like I used to live yeah. my my very first couple that I ever moved in with. Um, <laughs> like when I moved to Queensland, was like uh, a man who was like working like a really well paying job, and I uh, a lady who was like not working anything basically, or like her job was really really bad, and she mm -hmm. like <clears throat> had borrowed a lot off of him to like maintain their relationship in their house, and he like had a fucking spreadsheet and like knew exactly how much she owed and was gonna like waiting for her to pay back every bit yeah anyway you remember Lubor? I do I do remember Lubor Clive. To what do it's I funny that his name sounds like Lou I just wanted consider... to see how the town's been faring since you brought now. everyone together uh, since we brought everyone together, all is absolutely Very nice wonderful. of you to be credit. 
Conrad and when I did remain safely away very, from each other's very little. throats and firmly at the helm. Our stores are full and the bandits still too I disorganized to raid them. Just as the good Lady Jane and Lord Underhill intended. Are you a lord? Lubor's going to be one too. They're going to make him the Lord of Dalamil because of how he stopped all the grown-ups from fighting. It's the mayor of Dalamil, dear child, and the vote hasn't taken place just yet. Oh. But if the people wish me to lead them, I shall. My first act will be to build a school so that menaces like you two learn not to interrupt your elders. <laughs> so those menaces? There may be a rather worrying one just over the horizon. May there indeed. I'm afraid the example Conrad and Natalie set in putting aside their differences in presenting a united front might have caught the bandits' attention. And they might have elected to take a similar approach. They have formed what one could call a League of Outlaws. And they grow more organized by the day. But we'll fight them all off just like last time. No matter how many of them there are. <coughs> Won't we, Lubor? Of course we will. If we continue to work together, we can overcome any challenge we choose to face. The longer we avoid facing this one, the more difficult it will be. Yeah. Until the only way to overcome it might be to run for the hills. Gotta nip it in the bud. Our best hope oh, okay. Is yeah. These efforts at organization <laughs> in the bud. <laughs> by finding those ne'er-do-wells who have yet to join the cause, and ensuring that they never do. Oh, of course he'd fucking say ne'er-do-wells. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps a certain Lord Underhill might be willing to lend us his aid once more? How could I refuse and How could I refuse? Thank you, my lord. Victor will fill you in on the particulars. I have him stationed by the desert gate, receiving and collating reports from my scouts. Such an amenable soul. He reminds me of you. I'll go and speak with him. Yeah, I really like Lubor. And I like that the voice actor for him had a lot of fun with him. You know? Yeah. No, that's... whatever. A League of Outlaws. Sounds like we have some competition. <laughs> Still in Dalamil, Victor. Ah, Sid. I thought you'd have returned Hello. to Cosnes by now. I did. Then I came back. I've developed something of a fondness for the place. And having worked so hard to see it saved from one fate, it would seem remiss to abandon it to another. <laughs> a sentiment Master Lubor certainly isn't shy about exploiting. Hence my doing his bidding yet again. You're not the only one. What does he want you <laughs> to do? He asked for my aid in putting down the bandits. And he said that you might be able to help me find them. Then you've come at just the right time. I was on my way to speak with Conrad about how to organize our forces. There are more camps in the vicinity than we can safely strike at once. But we must strike together, and we must strike soon at as many camps as we can. We can't give this league of theirs time to... Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. There's one up with... Leave it with me. All right. Pop open another Reddit post. All right. Relationship advice. Those ne'er-do-wells want to... Breaking up over me, 39 male, wanting sex with her, 35 female. That... I know it's not an Aether, but, like, he is, essentially? Or, like, already, like, at least if I'm passing first judgment. <laughs> it's like, if they don't want to have sex with you, then that... That's the long and short of it, buddy. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on... Yeah, it's, it's too vague for me to make a judgment based on the title alone, because I'm thinking, like, if the issue is, like, that you're just sexually incompatible, then no, you're not an asshole for wanting to break up. Because, like, yeah. it sucks when people use 
uh, like I have needs as like an excuse to cheat. But, like, you know, for some people that is like being sexually incompatible is a deal breaker. And like, yeah, I guess if that's like an issue for you, then you break up. Anyway. So I have been dating GF for one year. She's really fun. I love her personality. We also have great sex. She's the most orgasmic woman I've ever dated. Alright, well, that's, that's a really fucking good start. That's a good sign, <laughs> isn't it? We go down on each other consistently. We're, oh, it's okay. Good. That actually doesn't. That actually does sound healthy, then. Like, if he's, like, describing it as each other. Like, uh, orgasmic yeah. is, like, a we Like, I would put that in the same line as when a man, like... It's like I yeah, I, like, I like this woman because her tits are really nice, like you know. Right, right. But like then he's like, oh, we go down on each other. Like that seems shared and equal, right? Mhm. Mm because like there's a lot of men. I that I aren't... tend to doubt I tend to doubt men when they say it's good for each of us, but like. Yeah, let's take it at face value because like we if we want to play the the. You are going to... down. You're trying. So, well, it, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt here. The thing is, we could sit here and play the is the post a lying game for every post, and I think that sort of undermines oh, yeah, the value yeah. of, like... It's taking, the same... It's taking the, it at face value. Yeah, it's the same thing as, like, when you read, like, really funny Tumblr posts, but then someone is like, uh, this didn't happen. It's like, no, it didn't fucking happen, but it's still an entertaining post. Shut up. Like, <laughs> I'm... Like, I'm fairly certain, like, 75% of these posts didn't happen, and people are just doing it to, like, get attention on Reddit. But... Who cares? Shut the fuck up. We're reading it for fun. Uh, so, okay. Yeah, I think... I think that's a good sign that they're like... It sounds like yeah. they are both trying to please each other, not just like... Mm. Man, when I put my dick in her, it feels really good, so she must love her. Like, you know. That must be the right. I mentioned. Come on then, Togo. She tends to want to... She tends to want sex in the moorings, and she voices this in text to me while I'm at work. I go in at 5 a.m., she goes in at 8 a.m. So when we're actually able to have sex at night, she says she's too tired, etc., I get a little frustrated. I voiced this a few times in the year we've dated. We see each other two to three times a week, so basically I'm usually wanting sex around two times a week. Fast forward to cross-country trip. This trip is basically an outdoorsy trip, something she's very into and I'm trying to get into for her. We've gone hiking the past two days, six miles and four miles. Also got into running and cardio to do races with her, which was a challenge for me because I only lifted weights before. Alright, I'll give this guy- he, he is like- Getting into things that she's getting cool. into. Yeah, like for the sake of Exercise doing them with her. Yeah, exercising to be healthier. And like, it's like, cause I've like done the gym experience and like, uh, I could like, oh my God, there's a fucking healer. That's why this is taking so long. Like, <laughs> I, like, it's a good sign when someone who's like lifts weights admits that cardio work that's really intensive is not something they're good at because like, that's not something that you imagine, like, your stereotypical, like, mm -hmm. gym bro would accept, right? Like, oh, I lift weights, yeah. running must be fucking easy. You're, if you run, if you just run, you're a pussy. Yeah, like, he admits that it, he admits that it's a challenge, but he's doing it anyway. Yeah, so I think this guy's, I think this guy's, yeah, I think he's good. So we fly into a big city first night. It was a long day. We both worked before flying out. Got into our hotel and we slept ten hours. I tried mm. to initiate sex after we'd woken up. She said she was tired. I gently said we just slept 10 hours. She said her head was tired and that we'd have sex that night. So we get up, we drive three hours to our Airbnb. Yeah, what's up? Oh, I was gonna listen to the guy. Or do you want, did you want me to Oh, okay, me? okay. Ah, I see the bandits didn't pose you any trouble. No, but that's not why you're here, is it? No. Something's happened. We need you back in Dalimil. What is it? The whole town's in uproar. They're saying that Lubor is a bearer. Uh-oh. Seems that one of our parties wasn't as thorough as they should have been. They let one of the bandits escape, and his escape route took him right through Dalimil. 
Some of the children spotted him, and he was about to silence them. And when Lubor felled him with a bolt of magic and without a crystal. But that's not possible. It is if he's a bearer and has been hiding it all these years, which is what people are saying. If he has, well, I wouldn't blame him. No man is branded by choice. Still, all those people see is a man who's lied to them all his life. One who was made a leader of himself when the Both world believed he should have been a slave. Fuck. I don't know where we go from here, but I know one thing. Lubor needs all the friends he yeah, can Yeah, what's wrong with the bolt of magic? You're right. I was thinking, like, options, currently. He, possible, he was a... I mean, he's been a secret bearer this whole time. But also, Sid's been dead a while, hasn't he? Shouldn't there be a new lightning dominant? Right? Dunno. And now everyone knows. But it's also possible he was just a bear. I made it to keep a crystal close at hand for just such an occasion. And when that occasion arose, I forgot to reach for it. Well... It was bound to come out sooner or later. Yes. We're sorry, Lubo. We tried to keep running. But we just couldn't anymore. There's nothing to be sorry for. I rather enjoyed playing the hero for once. All that matters to me is that you two are safe. <coughs> Look at him talking to his betters like it's nothing. All lies are wager. Just like the ones he fed us all these years. Once people make up their minds, it's hard to change them. We need to do something, and quickly. Convince the people not to you let their fuckers prejudices want to fuck with bears? them. Convince them that nothing has changed. That their enemy lies outside these walls, not within them. You're right. We should speak to everyone. I'm glad That's you agree. That's not what you I'll handle the townsfolk. I'm a downright born and bred. They listen to me. You head to the tavern. Make Conrad and Natalie remember who Lubor really is. They know that Lubor and I are He's friends. just a twink! I might not make for the most impartial of interlocutors. He's a twink with secret magic powers. Of Randall's League of He's just Sarah a little guy. Is a trusted and who lied to everyone, Tyler? He's a Just a little guy. It's his He's birthday. supposed to be a slave! Lubor, He's just a little guy. Stay here with the children. Birthday. Such a no bad person. We'll try. He's just a little brute. Give him a break. You. Can't believe he's such a lying piece of human fill. It is. I do like the the little um the uh, how am I wording this thing? Um the 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 way that it's clear in uh. That, that his sort of bravado was always because he was in control of the situation. Because, like, the moment he has no control of the situation, he's suddenly a lot more subdued. Mm -hmm. Like, he didn't flirt with us once in that whole conversation. There. He was just like, <sighs> Yep, this is happening. This Forgive me for disturbing you, but could I have a moment of your time? Hmm. I've seen your face before. As have I, Lord Underhill, wasn't it? Of the League of Merchants. Uh, that's right. I wanted to speak wanted to you about Lubor. The rumor wanted to ask you all to calm the fuck down. All true, I'm afraid. You're yeah, that, I don't give a shit about that, now. actually. Not if I have anything to do with it. But what if his wares? Just... Fair or Takes no, his steel is highly valued throughout the Republic. In this, at least, he's done the town a service. Might that not earn him a little leniency? Leniency? He pretended to be one of us when he was laughing behind our backs all the while. I'm sorry, he's my literally lord. is he one of you. Us. He lied to you. He cannot be trusted. So what do you propose? Will you drive him from his home? Close his forge? Perhaps. That is a question for the people of Dalimil, and they will thank you not to get involved. Ouch. Damn. Clive really did not try. The townsfolk have made their minds up. There was nothing I could do. 
Nor I. Conrad and Natalie refuse to consider anything but their own wounded pride. You never know. Once their anger is cooled, they might see things differently. For now, we should report back to Lumbor. Once their anger is cooled and this town is off the map because no one gives a shit now that they're not getting steel from it, their attitude might change. Yeah, right. Let's let's get let's introduce Lubor to Blackthorn. No, because then Blackthorn will have seen something. He'll have seen a dick, and that'll put him in a different mood. Yeah. I assume the situation is hopeless. There's still hope. But fading fast. But perhaps not in this lifetime. I think it's fair to say. You mustn't think like that, Lubo. Give them time. They'll come around. We'll talk some sense into them in the end. You'll see. No, you won't. And your efforts would be better spent elsewhere. But Lubo. Rosina would often tell me that steel does not lie. That a blade is a reflection of the smith who forged it. To yourself be true. That was her point. Rather an ironic one when you consider that her life was taken with a blade of her own making. But I do not doubt that she was always true to herself and what she believed in right to the end. And so must I be. I must do what I know to be right no matter what others might think of me. And now, I know what that is. I must embrace my new role of villain so that the people of Dalamil have something to unite against. For only united can they hope to stand against the threat that awaits them. I'll need to make a suitably dramatic exit, of course. Don't go, Lubor. You're the only one who was ever kind to us. We'll be all alone. Again. Trust me, little ones. It is for the best that I go. Not only for the town, but for you, too. How could it possibly be for the best? These children need you. The least you can do is give the townspeople Come to, the hideaway. to change their minds. They would not take it, Victor. It's over. Over, you say? And so just like that, you're going to throw this town and these children to the wolves? I thought you were better than this. But it seems you had me fooled as well. Litter. Forget it. Give him a break. He's just Do a little you guy. Will. You sure you're making the right choice, Lubor? Of those available to me, I believe it's the best one. Yes. Ah, but where are my manners? Here. A reward for clearing out that bandit camp. Right then. I have packing to do. If there's anything I can do, anything, I'll bear it in mind. Thank you. That little hesitation when he said that, like, fucking yeah. destroys me. Cause like, that's like him, like, <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. Is the next quest available? I don't believe it is yet. Because, like, no. you know you know how when you have, like, social anxiety, you get that, that kind of feeling of, like, everyone everyone's secretly talking about me, no one likes me, actually. You know, like, that? Yes. Uh, I have to imagine that the entire time he's been hiding that he's a bearer, he's had this little anxious, like, thought in the back of his mind. It's like, if anyone found out, they'd immediately hate me. And now it's probably been validated. Probably to tamp it down. Yeah, I'd probably try to tamp it down with like, no, I've given so much to this place is my home. These people are my friends. Like, I've given so much to this town. I've done so much for them. They they wouldn't turn their back on me so it is easily. So, and they did. It is so fucking bad for your mental health when your anxiety about something the is the validated. Thought was validated. Yeah, yeah I, I had that happen to me. <laughs> Did I tell you about that? No. I, I did tell you about that at some point, I think, but it was like a minor thing. Um, 
but like I've always had that sort of um because I I have social studies so yeah it's, it's always be in the back of my mind it's like you're being too annoying you're talking too much people don't like you that whole thing yeah. all the time and one time I got a message from a mod in a discord server I was in that was like oh hey by the way uh I've gotten some some people have like told me that they don't like when you do this and this because uh, it makes them uncomfortable or something oh, like that. Oh yeah, I remember. Wasn't this in the was doll? Like, wasn't this in the doll Discord? No, it was in the like an Animal Crossing Discord. I was in. I, I yeah, but you left, didn't didn't you? Because like that one comment yeah. ruined your perception it was of like, the relationship permanently. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, I totally get that. Because it validated that, and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> you, could, Damn. you could never undo that damage, so you just left. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I totally get that. Um, yeah, no, cause, so I don't share your social anxiety, like, I think we've sort of, like, made that clear. I'm a socialite, I'm an mm -hmm. extrovert, like, meeting people, talking to people, like, I was on a call with Snow once, like, while I was, like, out in town, like, like, just on my phone on Discord, hanging out with her, because I, like, I wanted the company, and, like, on call with her, I was like, yeah, hold on for a sec. No, I just walked up to someone and asked for directions to a store, right? And it's, like, very normal to me. But, like, Snow, fully genuinely, and I think you'll immediately relate to this as well, was just like, how did you do that? Like, how did you uh, just ask someone where the store is? And it, like, that was, like, a really good, hit, like, hit to me that it really is different when someone has social anxiety. Because, like, for me, yeah. it really was easy. It was just, I just, uh, with my mouth was my genuine answer. <laughs> like, yeah. I said words. I do it all the time. Um, yeah. But, like, like, it was, like, a really good indicator that, wow, it really is different when you have social anxiety. Like, these mm. situations that must be completely normal or that I even specifically like... Like, I want to go to parties, right? Like, that's... Th yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone who I know talks about having social anxiety talks about not wanting to go to parties, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's, like, social anxiety 101, if I wanted to apply a stereotype to it, right? Right, yeah. But, like, I want to. I want to go to parties. I want to, like, get up on karaoke just... stages and embarrass myself. Like, I want to do that kind of shit, because it just seems fun. Yeah, the, um, the, the, I was just thinking of, because I was connecting it to the discussion we had before about the sort of detachment, the, the autistic detachment, mm -hmm. like, because I also had no, tr no problem leaving that, like, I had been in that discord for, like, a year, and I was just like, uh, well, and I just left. <laughs> oh my god, Tyler, I accidentally happened upon one of the hunts that I've got to do. <gasps> This is such a colorful chocobo! Yeah, and guess what? This is gonna be your first uh, interaction with a Final Fantasy staple. This is actually something you've never experienced before, and I'm really excited. Um, it, there is a Final Fantasy ch staple for the most powerful of chocobos to be able to frequently cast the Meteor spell. It's just a thing. It's just a thing that Aren't chocobos these? do. I don't know why. It's, ju it's just... It's just a thing. Choco Meteor. It literally even has its own special name, and it's usually a lot more goofy, like when the meteor lands on the ground, little stars pop out instead of, like, an actual, like, scary explosion, right? Like, I don't know if in this game the stars pop out, because this game is a very brooding, serious game, but, like, mm -hmm. it, it's this is going to be your first, in uh like, interaction with, like, the concept that Chocobos have the ability to cast Meteor. It's even it's called the Dread Comet. It's a parrot! Yeah, I guess another name would have been Paradise Bird. Yeah, look, see? Choco Meteor. It's just a thing Chocobos do. It's very interesting. Didn't you say there was one that when it's on the meteor, the meteor has a bunch of chocobos on it? Stars. And I also said that it won't happen in this game because it's brooding. But like other right. games that like do it, like have, were like... Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's very fun to like 
think that this is your first experience with another Final Fantasy staple. Yeah. Because, like, it's been a staple that they brought back. It's, like, in a lot of older games. But they, like, didn't do it for a bunch of games. Well, that's not entirely true, actually. Final Fantasy XII had a hunt that I don't think I did that had, like, a lot of chocobo, like, that had a chocobo doing some really mm -hmm. insane magical shit. But I don't think specific- oh, Meteor Rain. Sorry. I think we skipped a lot of shit as well. Yeah. I apologize, it's just casting Meteor Rain over and over again. Right. <laughs> yeah, while in the Efrit like prime thing, so it's like got the dual voicing shit. Yeah. Nice try. Fuck. It's like a game of whack fuck. What's whack fuck? Whack fuck. <laughs> Yeah. Poor beast. What shall I? There was nothing I could do. You could try not killing it. It was minding its own business. You could have left it alone. Nah, it was killing other people. They could have left it alone. It's in a pathway between villages. This is a big open field. I feel like we could have gone around. That wasn't a big open field. Look at it. It's a pathway. Okay, I see two other pathways. Nope, that one is not a pathway. It's a dead end. Okay, I see one other pathway. That's... Shut up! We can't just quarantine sections of our world because a rampaging beast That's gets to kill people. I feel like if you live in a world with dragons, you, that's a perfectly reasonable solution to a problem. No, you slay the dragon and occupy the land. Gonna drive the poor things. Just what? Gonna drive the poor things to extinction. What? They're creatures that deserve to live just much less. I no. What did you say? You're gonna drive them to extinction. Yeah. Well, maybe they deserve it. All right. I'm, I'm gonna keep reading. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Uh. Why is it? Three hours for our Airbnb. We go to dinner, and she mentions something about hearing the neighbors talking in one of the neighboring condos. I say, well, they'll be hearing us later. She says, maybe not tonight. The next morning, I vent my frustration at being denied twice in one day on, one, on vacation, one of which was well in advance. She says she's sorry, and later on the way back from her hike, she asks if we can have sex when we get home, and we have great sex later that day. Then this morning, we're getting ready for our hike, and I asked if we can have sex later that day, like she had done the day before. She replies, I don't want to say yes, but I don't want to be legally obligated. It irks that me, was. but I go to shower and get ready for the hike. When I come out to the kitchen, I'm not saying much, so she asks me what's wrong. I tell her she makes it sound like sex with me is such a chore, and then this is literally one day after I'd expressed my frustrations. She flips out and says she can't win with me. She's acting like this is big enough to break up about, and says she says our priorities are different. I asked repeatedly if she's saying any, uh, saying that about anything else, if this sex thing is the only issue. She says that's it. So basically we are about to fly back tomorrow and break up because I want sex too much. I would understand more if the sex wasn't good, but this is kind of bizarre to me. Too long didn't read, good relationship with good sex, about to end because of me wanting too much? Question mark. We are 39B and 35 in good shape. Alright. I have a few fucking takes. Firstly, and this is gonna be a little bit of a stereotype, and I apologize, but just because a woman is flipping out at that time does not mean that a breakup is happening. Even if yeah. she is genuinely disproportionately angry based d compared to the thing that she is angry about, one fight does not a breakup make. Yeah. Like... I think he's so... <laughs> We're gonna break this. up? Oh my god, are you breaking up with me? No, she's just pissed at you at that moment. 
and she's being hyperbolous because she's pissed at you and you're taking that seriously. But like, then there's the actual problem. I don't know what to think here. I think, I think that like her being like, uh, I don't want to like commit to it now just in case I'm too tired. Like after a hike, right? Like that's really reasonable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that like, th like it's the way he describes it, how it's like, oh, I asked a couple of times and she said no a couple of times. And then I asked again and she said yes. And then we had great sex. But then I asked again the next day and she said no. Like, you're getting yes. Like, it's, it kind of like reminds me. Well, I don't think he made the connection is when he stopped asking, she was like, okay, I want to have sex now. And then they had sex. So like, just chill out. She will come to you when she's ready because she is also enjoying the sex. Chill. Yeah, it's like it's the you thing right sometimes i can ask you to watch something too many times and you don't want to do it more because of that mm -hmm. i think that is silly though and like i think we've made that pretty clear that i think it is silly to want to watch something less because someone wants you to watch it more but also at the same time i also do it yeah, it's the classic, I'm cleaning my room, and then someone pops in and goes, hey, you should clean your room. And you just throw down whatever you're holding and go, no! I'm not cleaning it my room! It is a symptom, my guy. We are suffering from the symptom. Of the symptom of what? Take your pick, man. <laughs> <laughs> throw a not fucking dart. It's one of them. Yeah. <laughs> the symptom of neurodivergency. Or abuse. Yeah, it's just one of those. Uh, alright. Some comments. You're nagging and pushing her to have sex because you want it. Lady boner killer for sure. Yeah. And this comment, uh, he much. actually responded to. He oh. actually replied to. Oh. A different comment. I'm reading a new comment and then- Yes, I know! I know! I uh, understand. Go. Constant asking sucks. I was with someone who did this. It killed any semblance of wanting to have sex with him. I could feel the energy change when I knew he was about to ask and it created a sense of dread. Asking puts sex on a schedule which takes the fun out of it. Essentially, you ask her and now she's probably thinking, I have to be in the mood around X time. And that creates pressure. Pressure around sex can lead to different emotions like anger or being distant. I understand your frustration, and you seem like a good partner. Start flirting, being a bit more hands-on, etc. Instead of just point blank asking, point blank asking, hey, can we have sex? Mm. And uh, he replies, "Thanks for the feedback. Definitely makes sense." This is interesting because there's parallels here between this and then me and Brayden. Uh, I don't know how much I've talked to you about that, but like, we aren't doing nearly as much as I'd like. But I don't know how much I want to get into that on stream exactly. Yeah. You wanna, you wanna air out that dirty laundry? No, I don't think it's dirty laundry, so to speak. Also, wow, I just realized I was on 200 HP. Like, I was nearly dead. But yeah, no, I, I don't know. It's, I can, I can see both sides. I think is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. And someone asked, "Bro, you don't have to have sex constantly," and he replied, "Yeah, but I'm being honest when I'm, it's asking for like two times a week. But I'm starting to realize asking and putting pressure on her is making it unenjoyable, and it's something I can work on." So. Yeah, two times a week is not unreasonable. 
Like, yeah, that, someone that's... else someone else says, yeah, but you only see her two or three times, so it's literally every time you're together. Mm. No, but he has but it does needs, seem like he's, Tyler. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it does seem like he's open to, like, okay, I'm, like, reapproaching this issue in a different way, so... And he did update the post, said, update, thank you for the feedback, I have some stuff to work on. So... That's the end of that. Yeah. I still don't like the melodrama, though, that he was like... Oh, we're gonna break up over this? OMG. Yeah, I think the, the comments of, like, I've, I've stuff to work on is, like, after he had some time to cool off. Like, okay, I re- Alright. Relaxing now. Yeah, not much to say about this one. Okay. My 30F friend, 30F, wants to name her baby the name of our best friend, 27F, who passed away. Except I already chose that name. Should I let her take the name or have her cut me off? What? All right, that escalated. <laughs> Trigger warning for death, obviously, but it's entitled, so, yeah. like... Can you read that title again? So both of the... Friend 1 is 30, so yeah. Friend 2 is 30, yeah. Friend, they're, both yeah. they're both either having a baby my or planning to. They have a third friend... A baby. Yeah. They have a third he friend died. who is 27F who died, and they both want to name. I assume would also be 30F, but died three years ago. I don't know. That's I not... That's a reach. Well, that's the first sentence. Anyway. Oh, fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> Except I already chose the name. Should I let her take the name? Like, okay. that was, like, reasonable, like, a, a reasonable question up until, or should we stop being friends over this? Yeah, but like, knowing the how these posts tend to go, I think the, the question is, like, um... I think the, the other friend is the one who's like, I'm gonna cut you off if you do this, so... No, no, I'm, well, I'm not so saying that's... that that's her. Yeah. I'm not saying that because I'm like, wow, why would OP just be like, wow, if you don't let me have the name, I'm gonna fucking leave. Yeah. I'm just, like, bewildered by the... It, the this is a that escalated quickly moment. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so I'll, I'll start. Yeah. Okay, names have been changed for anonymity, obviously. Anonymity. <laughs> I, 30F, and my best friend Nicole, also 30F, lost our best friend Christina, 27F, at time of death, due to a horrific car accident. We had been a trio since we were four years old, and Christina's death was, and still is, extremely traumatic for me. Do you want to do the quest? Uh, and then I'll I'm, resume. don't even think it's, uh, this is like the undying guy who, like, was exploring a village inside a thing, and like they're dead. Oh, we're helping him survey a thing. No, they're dead. Oh. They oh yeah, no, we do want to like focus on these quests because they're like these were the ones that I was like interesting moral quandaries. Is it? Oh. You'll pay for this. Yeah, so they died trying to get this information for Joshua. There may still be survivors. Anyway, yeah, continue. Uh, we've been a trio since you're four years old, and Christina's death was an extremely traumatic. Both me and Nicole have had a horrible time coping without her and missed her so much. She was a one in a million sister to us. Nicole and I have gotten even closer since her death, which makes this even more difficult. At the time of Christina's death, I was seven months. Seven months. They didn't write pregnant, but I'm gonna assume pregnant. I well, that's pregnant you don't have baby. you don't have to write pregnant in in the especially when the post is about having children. You, I've yeah. seen I've seen loads of the posts just be like, yeah, I'm five months, I'm three months. I seven was five months. months. I was seven months with my first baby, a little boy. We'd originally picked an honor name for him from our family, but my husband suggested we name it Christian in honor in our Christina. I sat with it a little bit a bit and brought it up to Nicole, who was extremely against it, but not for the reasons you think. Since childhood, Nicole has hated any person younger than her by five, by four years. What? What? She mm -hmm. has been adamant about remaining child-free, and I and I don't think we had a single discussion ever about her 
dated any person younger than her by four years. That's a really weird way to put that. And also, things that happen in your childhood don't stay happened. Oh look, there's more dead, uh... There's more dead undying. Damn. Boy, they failed. Yeah. You know, Whatever at being undying. Yeah. Rip. Um... But that's He's also like... About that's such huh? a weird way to word that. Yeah. Strange. Uh, she'd been adamant about we're reigning child free, and I don't think we had a single discussion about e ever about her and even entertaining the idea of having kids. However, I love kids, and I think I'm a pretty decent mom, so if I could afford it, I, could, I would have 20 kids. But for now, we're settling on hopefully having kids. Nicole knew I wanted more kids than just my boy, and said that I should really save Christina until I had a girl, or worst case scenario, if I only had boys. Then my last little one would be named Christian. After the explanation, I completely agreed that Christina should be saved for a future child and went with the other name for my son, which completely fits his personality is perfect for him, so she still made so she still made the right call, huh? Fast forward to today. I'm 31 weeks pregnant with a little girl. We have picked out the name Christina for we have picked out the name Christina Iris to name her after my best friend's name and her favorite flower. We have we have embroidered so many things with her name, and have even announced it on social media already. Anyone who knows me knows this baby will be named Christina. Nicole got married a year ago to the most wonderful man, and has completely changed the way she looks at kids. I was super excited, because while I never brought it up, I had always dreamed of our kids being best friends the way she, her and I were. She and I got pregnant pretty close together, by accident, and is currently 23 weeks. Before finding out the gender, she and I workshopped the uh... And hold on a sec, can I- 31 weeks and 23 weeks. Can we take a moment to figure that out in months, please? Because weeks is such an abstract. Uh... 31 see. weeks. It's like four weeks a month. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. That's like seven and three quarters of months she is. Yeah, OP so is. like almost eight months. Yeah. And then 20... And 23 is like five. Five and a... Like, nearly six. Five and a bit. Yeah, so they're like one month ab uh, about, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So, before finding out the gender, she and I workshopped a ton of names that she and her husband loved and had figured out something perfect for her vibes. However, after her gender reveal, when she found that she was having a girl, something flipped a switch and she had been adamant that she should get to name her baby Christina now. I told her I was willing to compromise and change the middle name so she could have Iris and that I wouldn't mind that at all if her little girl's middle name was Christina. In fact, I threw that out uh, while we workshopped names, and she originally said no. Or that she could go for Christine, but she has refused all of them. She said she will be naming her baby Christina, and that I needed to comply because Christina was alive for my wedding, but it was not for hers. And so I don't just get to take whatever I want. I'm devastated about this because I absolutely do not want to ruin our friendship. I want for our kids to be best friends and watch, watch them grow up together. I need her. I need her friendship desperately. Oops. She is not budging. All right, I'm gonna unpause this and we can continue. Yeah. Stranger. Who are you? Ah, forgive me, my lord. I did not recognize you. You are Lord Rosby, are you not? We are archaeologians tasked with surveying this site. When the Echoes appeared, our brothers here occupied their attentions. Thanks to them, and to you, we were, for a mercy, able to see our duty to its conclusion. You call that a mercy? Your brothers might still be alive if you put their safety before your duty. Surely this survey wasn't worth dying for. We are charged with uncovering Ultima's origins. A duty of the highest import, as I'm sure you will agree. And you think your dead brothers would agree with you too? I know they would. They gave their lives for the cause, an honor to which all undying aspire. Now, to what do we owe the honor of your presence, Lord Marquis? Cyril told me of your work here, and I agree to collect your findings in his stead. I see. <laughs> that is most kind. Pray. Take them, then, with our humble thanks. 
May the Firebird's flame burn ever in your heart, as it does in ours. He's clearly not happy with the waste of human life. Oh yeah. It's one thing to lay down your life for another. But for a survey... I suppose I'd better get this back to Cyril. Yeah. I feel like you definitely could have, like, run and then been like, Hey Cyril, I think there might be something over there, but there's a problem. Maybe call Clive. Anyway, before you continue reading, this is uh, giving them the thing. What's this all about, then? Don't know. Hello? Some kind of new invention. Any trouble finding Oi, Blackthorn? Nothing I couldn't handle. I could never make a salamander have its skin like this. <laughs> <laughs> I could never kill a salamander. Blackthorn, focus. Uh, you're right. There should be plenty. Sorry. Right then. Time to put these lads to work. If everyone pulls their weight, we'll be finished in no time. Do we find out what kind of bear Libor is? Like, what element? I'm gonna assume lightning based on the word bolt. Yeah. Well, I'll be damned! I honestly didn't think it'd work! But it's hot enough Are there sword bearers? A single crystal in darkness. You know what this means, don't you? Are there darkness bearers? I do, yeah! I don't think I've ever seen oh, one, but... Insane. Theoretically, right? Sorry about earlier. I, uh, it's okay. I'm. I grew up guy, for like 15 years as a bearer, so I'm used to people telling me to piss off. An honest to God's marvel. You saved our village. It's Blackthorn you should be thanking. He oversaw the construction. Give this to him, would you? What is it? Give it to him yourself, pussy. Head cold cinders. After he left, I spent years trying to eke the most out of our forges. That there was my answer. Chuck it in the fire, and your forge will burn hotter for longer, which will do wonders for your steel. Our secret for yours. Only fair. I've always envied Blackthorn. Since the day I became chief, I spent every spare moment trying to match up to the bastard. No amount of sleepless nights at the Anvil will ever bridge that gap, though. He's a genius. Plain and simple. The man Dravosh didn't need it. But he took all his talent and left. Gifted and free. Is it any wonder I hate his guts? The cinders would mean more coming from you. I need to forgive him first. And that's not gonna happen. Well, you know what they say? Oriflam weren't built in a day and all that. These things take time. Especially when they involve two geezers who hold grudges tighter than their hammers. But what matters is, Blackthorn's got that twinkle back in his eye. And I'd call that... A job well done. So would I. I reckon he's gonna be at it a while August, ago, so why don't next you time, why don't you just suck his I'll dick? I'll see that the old git gets home safe and sound. See that you both do. I'll save the cinders till then. Alright. It'll be a nice little surprise for him. I'm a fucking gay, bro. August is gonna, like, propose to him with a ring, and he's gonna be like... I want a set of these bellows for our forge. Bellow D's. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. Alright. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Christina was alive for my wedding, but was not for hers, so I don't just, just take whatever I want. Uh, I'm devastated about this because I absolutely do not want to ruin our friendship. I want our kids to be best friends. I need her friendship desperately. But she is not budging. I've already spent all this money on clothes and blankets and signs for my little girl, and so I'm dead set on the name, too. I feel for her about the wedding, but she's treating me like I should be punished for it rather than understanding 
uh, that Christina also missed out on a ton of its huge achievements of mine, like seeing my son be born, huge job promotions, and etc. I'm also upset because she's the one who convinced me to name my son something else when I could have given him the name Christian. It finally came to a head this morning where she basically demanded I give all my embroidered stuff to her, all my embroidered stuff that I bought for my baby girl so that I wouldn't use it to her and allow her to name her daughter Christina or else she's going to cut me off. I'm at a loss and I'm unsure what to do. Should I let her cut me off and since I'll give birth first, stick to the name? Or should I give her my stuff and take the loss for the name? I'm just so sick about this entire situation and I know Nicole is just grieving in her own way, but I feel forced to in a corner and have no way to fight for what I want. What should I do? Hmm. TLDR, lost our BFF Christina hor horrifically three years ago, and I'd planned on naming my first baby girl Christina. BFF Nicole is now pregnant with a girl and wants to name her Christina and will not budge on it, and is threatened to cut me off if I use it. But I let her take it or cut me off. Edited for clarity about my son's name, I did not name him Christian. Also, I do not mind either either of them both being named Christina. Uh, I don't, don't mind both of them being named Christina. She yeah, that was going to not go for it. That's what I was going to say as well. But, like, this sounds entirely on her. Yeah, this sounds entirely of Nicole's making. Mm. Like, if this ruins the friendship, it will not have been uh. by OP's hands. No. But at the same time, it is something that OP is reliant on. And Probably stuff... unhealthily, honestly. Yeah, no, there's stuff we could talk about in the parasocial nature of being reliant on relationships, right? I've been there. I'm still sort of there at the moment. I think I'll be there for the majority of my life because it's just the unhealthy way I was raised. But, like... It, like... It's so much harder to make a reasonable judgement when your head is that clouded. And, like... Right. Like, I get look it. at me and Alex, right, Tyler? How long did I spend with him, right? I don't know. I never was with you during the Alex period, was I? Yeah, you were friends with me for a bit of it, I think. I just remember you talking about your abusive ex. Like, yeah, that's, that's Alex. That's all I remember. That's Alex. But I, I don't ever remember seeing the part where that became an ex. Or being... Mm around maybe, for the, the maybe it was maybe you are after it hmm that could be wrong all right but yeah i know it has felt like ages but it hasn't been that long well it's been like two years now, right how long ago were you with alex i don't know more than two years well, there you go. No, but I mean, since we've... Whatever. Anyway, point is, like... <laughs> like, it's so hard to make those kinds of decisions when your head is clouded and your brain is telling you that this is something you need, right? And it's really easy for me to be like, yeah, should you just stop being friends with her? But, like, it took me eight yeah. years to stop being with Alex. And so, I don't know if that advice applies. Not because it's not the correct advice, but it's just like, how do you do that, right? Right, yeah. I get that she's probably also muddled in grief, and her, like, grief has become attached to Nicole, basically. Yeah. Because they, they did say an, They basically trauma-bonded pretty heavily. Yeah, they did say that they grew closer through this as well. Yeah, that's some hell of a trauma bond right well, there. Well, and so here's the thing, right? Did you know that there's a there's like a really high, absurdly high rate of people who go to like Alcoholics Anonymous who relapse because they're going to Alcoholics Anonymous and are constantly reminded of like the existence of being drunk and the terrible things it does in the world of being of alcohol. Yeah, I wonder if like I can see that. I wonder if being friends with the third person who was a part of this trilogy is serving to prolong the grief of getting over them, because it's like, you're seeing the face of them every single day. Well, not necessarily every day, but- I could see that being the case if they weren't also- if, if, if like, you aren't also having, like, have- if you haven't also gone to, like, grief counselling on the side, 
Which then I could not. see like if you just if you're if your sole source of like uh recovering from this grief was is the, the bond with friend. The, the bond with the remaining person, yeah. Who is also grieving. We don't know. We're probably have... just gradually fucking each other up. We don't know the context of that, unfortunately. Uh let's see. Um anyway, let's see. I'm gonna hold on. Yeah, go ahead. You are returned, my lord. I collected your colleagues' preliminary findings. Here, take them. My thanks. I shall study them and inform you forthwith if I discover aught that might aid you in your fight against. You aren't. Cyril, your survey party suffered several losses in Kratov. Losses which could have been avoided had the others not chosen to complete their work instead of saving their friends. Were these your orders? No. This was their choice. Every undying devotes his life to the service of the Phoenix. It is our sole duty. And should we die in discharging it, so be it. Even when death is avoidable. My lord... I fear that this is not a point over which it would be fruitful to argue. The Undying have served the Phoenix for countless generations, and your opinion of our methods, however earnest, is not like to change them. We live to serve the Phoenix. Our very order exists for that purpose. And that purpose... That doesn't seem culty at all. <laughs> Clive just whips out his phone and opens the Ata Reddit post. <laughs> Am I the asshole for thinking that these are the <laughs> Alexa? Define cult. Cyril, I know that you and your brethren answer only to Joshua, but allow me to offer you a word of advice. It does not further the cause Joshua. of the Phoenix to have his loyal followers surrender their lives without good reason. Provide your survey parties with an escort, that they might live to do their duty for years to come. Think not only of how you can serve the Phoenix, but how Joshua would want you to serve him. Please. For all our sakes. I thank you for your advice, my lord. If you will permit me to respond. No. Our faith in <laughs> no. his grace, Joshua Rossfield is absolute and we of the undying will do what we believe is right to fulfill our duty unto him as first shield to the phoenix i am sure you understand what it means to do one's duty i do then we are of the same mind why don't we just drag Joshua in here and ask him if he thinks it's okay for these guys to die for it? Yeah, let's just Because I know what the fucking answer is gonna be. It's, I'm sorry, the fuck are you doing? Yeah. For a survey? Joshua, it's not what it seems. I read Clive's Am I the Asshole? I read Clive's Am I the Asshole post. Yeah, you're the You're asshole. (laughs) Clive is texting while the other guy's trying to justify himself. Joshua kicks down the door. Excuse me? Clive, I've anonymized the names to uh, because Joshua uses Reddit. Uh, Joshua, I've anonymized Throw the names because my brother uses Reddit. Yeah, uh, but like the details are still way too specific. Yeah, <laughs> my brother so, is like, the my first. My brother James is yeah. the Phoenix. My fr- brother James is the firstborn son of uh, Bahamut. <laughs> 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 they just replace all the names with pig latin because there literally is no other way hypothetically speaking if i had a younger brother called oshua j that'll trick him <laughs> if i cly uh, if i lie sounds more like a final fantasy name than joshua does yeah right i live k and my younger brother oshua j Is Pig Latin the first letter or the first sound? Uh, I think it depends on, like, um, 
I think like, it's actually like the first the first consonant sound basically. So like it so like if the if the word starts with a ch then you take both the c and the h because yeah. the first consonant sound. Yeah, like chips doesn't turn to hips k, right? They would turn to right. ips k. Yeah. And like photograph wouldn't turn to photograph pay. It would turn yeah. to to autograph fe. Yeah. yeah. But then like words that start with the word a, how do you do them? Cuz like that's the that's the real question, right? Like give me an example of a word. Uh Amsterdam. Amsterdam? Yeah. I think you'd go with Sturdam Ame. Sturdam Ame? No. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not fluent in Pig Latin. You should. Then you'd be able to add it to your language roster to compete with the Girl Crush. <laughs> I don't want to compete with Girl Crush. We're part. We want to be a partnership. Nah, man. You, <laughs> I want to be a partnership with you, her. I you, want to. You earn compute. more. You earn more, but they need to pay fifty percent of the rent. I do not rent. earn more. <laughs> I assure you, I do not earn more than her. <laughs> then why are you paying fifty percent of the rent, Tyler? <laughs> she earns like she earns like triple what I make. <laughs> really? Does she yeah. do triple what you do? She's got like a fucking doctor. She's she's like she's like. The guy that That's I That's not what I asked, with. technically. I just asked if she does triple what you do. I don't fucking care if she has a piece of paper. <laughs> Is she doing well, like, the same work as you but has a piece of paper? Because that's worse. No, no, she does different work. See, cause remember I used to be an assistant for the lab guy. Mm -hmm. She's taken over for the lab guy. So she's she does like a huge chunk. Like we do different work, but she's doing like I'd argue much like, just bigger, a much time. yeah. Um, if you remember last week, I write, I write reports. She generates the data for the reports. Yeah. So if you remember last week's story so far, Tyler, this is like the first village that me and Sid went to back when he was alive. And the prevailing right. story for Lost Wing is the owner of a this guy, Quinton, mm -hmm. has actually been gathering the bearers for his own personal revenge story. Uh, like a, a government official murdered his family in his sleep and Quinton has been like gathering bearers to launch uh, an assault on said government official ever since and mm. the previous quest was it coming to a head where Quinton was like alright fuck it we're doing it it's time so this oh, is yeah. now the it's time part I fear that I must bid you farewell. The problem is Quinton's voice is so As fucking boring! Grows short. The Lord Chief Justice's vultures are circling. We must strike now. Before we part, I want you to know that, though I may not always have been your most vocal ally, I trust you. As I trusted your predecessor. Thank you. I appreciate the sentiment. And I understand more than anyone how you feel. But is revenge really the answer? It is the one I found. And it is all that I have lived for since that day. But what of Lostwing? Everything you've built. I built Lostwing to achieve the same. Once it is done, the village will have served its purpose. My comrades and I are sure of our cause, and we shall fight to the last, come what may. But there are those among us who cannot fight. Children. The elderly, bearers afflicted by the curse. I would place Lostwing in their hands if I thought it would do them any good. But a village home only to the frail and the infirm is not likely to stay a safe haven for long. And so, Clive, I find myself turning to you once more. Will you take You're right, this guy's home? voice is super boring. Might live yeah. Should Lostwing die. I'm not going to skip the cutscene, but I'm going to advance through the text quicker, so just read it instead of listening. Uh-huh. So, he, you know... I will not understood, I'll make sure to get the highway, preparations... Then the last of my preparation, and may Grigor guide... So he's going to go off towards the thing. Right. With all of his, oh, with all of his bearer allies. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go over there. 
Because this quest does end... This is not the end of his quest line, but even this quest ends kind of cool. If it wasn't for the fact that his voice is so fucking annoying. Bales, then, and quickly, before anyone else finds them. Anyway, uh, do we have more to speak about in that Reddit post? I don't think so. I had some comments. Okay. Uh, this one comment that OP replied to. This friendship doesn't sound healthy. You need space from your friend. Has this always been the dynamic where she gets equal say in your life choices? Keep your baby's name. I couldn't imagine telling a kid the story of their name starting with my friend who bullied me to change the name and not honor my friend who had passed. And then uh, OP replies, Not always. We both have changed a lot since the death and we mm. both kind of learned we both handle the stress differently. Yeah. That's... You, you can tell that I don't vibe well with that answer. There's also a really long comment here. Go for it. Uh, I'm just gonna like. I would let her cut you off. Everyone, Quinton asked you to come with me. Quinton has asked that you come with me. You can no longer guarantee. None of us standing here. We're in our lives. We owe him our. If he's saying we ain't, and if that's what has to happen, but we get to. I hope so. Noi. Noi. You lot. Where's everyone else? They ain't already left, have they? They've gone with Master Quinton. Fuck. 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 Good thing we got a Dama here. I've just come from the Justice's Manor. We have to get Quinton to call off the attack. It ain't just the Black Shields protecting the place. He's got a guard dog and all. A fucking monster. They don't stand a chance against that thing. If I don't get the message to him, they're all gonna fucking die! No. I got it. We can't let this happen. Sith! Don't worry about us, you've gotta catch up with him. We can't let Quinton die before that bastard does. Alright. Why don't we just so take out the guard dog? Well, that's what they, we're gonna do. But Quinton's already on his way with a group of bearers to this thing. That's what they're saying. Promise us, Sid. Um, having said that, I will get to the manor in, on the way to every other quest. It's like here. This is where the manor is. But it's like, I have a quest here. And I have one here. Yeah. yeah. I have this one that I haven't even started. I'm sure Quentin will wait for you. And I have these two. Like. Sure, it'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. So I would let her cut you off. Both of you went through something extremely difficult. And I know these feelings don't go away no matter how much time passes. That's no excuse for her to treat you this way, though. It's not about you having the name first. It's the entitlement she has and how she approached the situation. She wants all your embroidered materials and signs for her child. Do you think she won't use them? It's ridiculously unfair to ask that of you. And if she's going to be the, an unreasonable friend, then she should not be in your life. If I was in your shoes, I would send her the following message. Hello, Nicole. I appreciate the love and support that we have both shared over the last X years or decades. As I move into this next phase of my life, I want to do it with people who will 100% support me. I am supposed to be an example to my children of the types of relationships I want them to have in the future. Our last interaction has left me with a bitter taste in my mouth and I cannot ignore it. Not only did you go back on your word, which I can forgive as no one owns a name, but your callous statement that our friendship was over if I named my child a name I have wanted for years, and I need to give it you all the materials I had bought as well to prove it to you, well, that I can't accept. I wish you well on your journey into motherhood, and I hope that our, your Christina experience is the best out of life. And then mute her messages. Block if you're done done, but mute if you want to leave that door open. You both get to use Christina, which you could both literally do. Nicole is being unreasonable. You both get to reduce the amount of stress you deal with during your pregnancy, and neither of you has to make a senseless sacrifice that a friend shouldn't ask of the other. Wishing you and your growing friend family well. Yeah, honestly, didn't even need that long a spiel. I don't, I don't know why they both just can't do it. Like, that's just the really odd part to me. Like, I don't know why she des she demands exclusivity over the name. It's really weird. Christina was both of their friends, not- Right, I would, I think, if I had to guess, I would say it's like a, like a grief factor, but like sort of like a, almost like a jealousy grief thing. Like, like, OP got to have Christina at her wedding. So, in Nicole's mind, Nicole gets to have Christina as her child. And only Nicole. And if 
if OP also gets to have Christina, then it's not fair. In her mind. Hmm. That makes me wonder. And also probably about... being. Go on. Having the pregnancy hormones is probably not making this go well either no. for either of them. Dealing with grief, like grief that has been like just festering in them for years, and also both being pregnant uh, can't be going very well for them. I'm gonna say something that uh, should not be controversial, but unfortunately is in our day and age. Uh, the way that, like, like, this is your description, it's not actually how she feels, but, like, if your description is true, it kind of paints an even worse picture in my head. If Nicole thinks that, uh, like, the daughter is their property, mm -hmm. name or not, that's... Ugh. Yeah, that's, uh... Because <laughs> then they're, they're projecting that um their like relationship with christina someone they can never get back onto a daughter who is a blank slate and is going to be their own person yeah, yeah i'll be that's... honest i'll be honest my take is like i don't think either of them should name it after the after christina in the same way, honestly, that I don't know if they should hang out. It'd be like a new reminder, wouldn't it? Yeah. I I would also, like, add the same caveat that I added before. It's like, provided, like, if they were both in therapy and had recovered to some extent, well, they then clear, perhaps... Clearly they have, like, Tyler. They are the most sane and, and, and <laughs> they seem healthy very, they people. They seem very put together. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's gonna help seem, either of seem, them. It, yeah, they seem in, in in control. But like, neither of them own the name. That's not what OP wants, though. Like, Nicole doesn't own the name, so if they have yeah, to, OP they can both fucking do it. But like, neither of them should. Yeah. Like, they gotta deal with their grief better than that. Not yeah. just foist it on their child. I gotta pee, and then I'm gonna get some ice cream. I gotta cream, and then I'm gonna get some iced pee. Okay. <laughs> that is honestly the best response you possibly could have given to that, I think. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of road between here and the capital. Rutherford's man could be anywhere. Shouting, I heard from the barrack. Do you think he was the only one who survived? Or they ran him? We already have a leader in the day. Well, what do you think? She said I should be able to find what I'm looking for somewhere nearby. Bright blue dragons and bright yellow flowers. Should be easy enough to spot. Be 
Oh my then. All right. Let's get this over with. Let's try. That's the wyvern's liver. Now I just need to find the herbs. Bright yellow with a heady scent. I return. Oh. Next post? Yeah. Am I the asshole for belittling, belittling, in quotes, my sister and Thank saying she shouldn't demand her husband help with their baby at night? Mm. <laughs> Before you start that, I want to be right back because I want to get a can of Coke and refill my water. Okay. I am thirsty. Thirsty? Here, let me help with that. I didn't hear Yeah, not there. Are you there? Oh. Okay. Can okay, ASMR? Are you ready? Yeah. Did you hear it? Barely, but. No. Wow, I put it right up against the microphone. I heard the click, but I didn't hear the hiss. There wasn't was really satisfying. a. There wasn't really a hiss. Oh, that's what's satisfying. Is it? Or are you just unsatisfied? Yeah. Both. Is it both? Or is it just the first one? Both. Shit, I meant the second one. It's both. Also, you said you were thirsty, and I said, here, let me help you with that, and I did the hydrate. Okay. So you were a child. So you were a child. Okay. Mm-hmm. How are people mean to stuffed animals? One time I was trying to clean up my room and tried to justify giving away a stuffed animal by saying, well, it's a little ugly. And immediately I was overwhelmed with monstrous guilt, and I understood the concept of a Catholic hell and that I was going there. Is this the post? No, that was just a different thing that I scrolled by okay. while I was waiting for you. 
just a skip. Oh, All right. Clive. Here's what am I to do? Oh, it's My well. and I may soon be without a home. What's happened? A high would be nice. Cardinal has I'm kidding. descended from his lofty throne and taken up residence well, she said the high in the cardinal. Reach. The high cardinal. Leader of the Council of Elders, second only to his radiance at the head of the Imperial government. Not that any of those things still exist. Now he goes by his noble title, the Duke of Oriflam. And what does he want with Northreach? He wants to transform it into a military stronghold. A foundation upon which to build a new Sambrek. Uh oh. He's already secured mm -hmm. the support of the various army remnants. With promises that they shall be afforded the respect they deserve in his empire. One built on the confiscated property of the people. Uh oh. Rob the populace to pay for it. Believe me. I have used every means of persuasion to discourage him from this folly. But for whatever Every reason, means? He will not listen to me. What does Captain Philippe make of this? When the town was under attack, it was him the soldiers rallied around. Couldn't he use that influence again? How? By speaking out against one of the most powerful men in Sambrec. A man whose stated aim is to revive the empire Philippe's comrades swore to serve, and to improve the soldiers' lot within it. The captain can offer them a regular supply of gruel, and an occasional trip to the Vale to help them forget the terrors they face each day. The Duke offers them a vision of strength and safety. No. Any attempt to incite mutiny would cost Philippe the support of his men. If it did not cost him his life. But given the mood around town, mutiny may yet be unavoidable. <sighs> The people have little appetite for further deprivation. Least of all when it serves only to elevate others. Who could blame them? Clive, would you appeal to the Duke on my behalf for your services to Northreach? You have the respect of the soldiers, and they will take you to his eminence if you ask them. And unlike Philippe, no bonds of loyalty prevent you from speaking your mind to the man. Well? Will you try? I could do a lot more than that. You could hardly fare any worse than I did. Unsheaths my sword. <laughs> Unsheaths a different thing. Clive, not in public. Thank you, Clive. Tell me then, where will I find this Duke of Oriflam? In the garrison? Overseeing the troops. Yes. All right. Wish me luck. Best of luck. Uh. Do you have a prejudgment on this I one? I've this to you before at the remembrance ceremony. Uh, I'm already leaning against him. Whenever like men do the thing where they put a woman's genuine complaints in asterisks uh, or in quotes marks to like undermine it, that's like a huge red flag for me. You know well, what I mean? I've already seen the first sentence, so I know it's a man that's saying it, but, like, from the title, I don't think they say. I think it was, wasn't it? What was the title? Am I the, am I the asshole for belittling my sister and saying she shouldn't demand her husband help with their baby at night? Oh, okay, no, I thought it was from the... Okay, okay. But you are right, it's a man, but, yeah. like... <laughs> that is a very man thing to do, as well. Yeah. Anyway, um... I can give you the summary of this cutscene. He tries to talk to the Duke. The Duke is like, lol, no. Get fucked. Let's begin with those on the other side of the wall. So instead, Clive is going to go, like, survey all the people and their opinions. Both the, the villagers and the townsfolk. Uh, the villagers and the soldiers. Mm -hmm. Those are more interesting conversations, though. So you might have to wait to read that one, unfortunately, because like it's going to be a lot of talking in a short time. All right, there. What is it you're after, sir? Just your opinion, actually. I wondered what you thought of the Duke of Oriflam. <laughs> oh, him. Not much. None of us traders do. 
It's thanks to nobles like him that we had to set up shop this side of the wall in the first place. Couldn't have the rabble getting any closer to the holy capital, could they? And now he's trying to drive us out completely, threatening to take everything we got from us if we don't clear off. If the dame said she wanted him run out of town, I'll be straight through that checkpoint tar bucket in hand. Good on ya! Eat the rich! Hell yeah! Dominion's all but done for. It is lucky we stay. I've been hearing a lot of talk about a certain duke. Nothing good, I'll wager. Going around acting like he owns the place. And with hardly a word to the dame. This is her town, not his. I take it you'd rather she was in charge. As far as I'm concerned, she still is. Just need his eminence to sod off back to Oriflam. All right. Sell anything today. Fucking excuse me, that voice. <laughs> <laughs> Sell anything like he was today. Fucking with you. This sounds like he was Harrison fucking with you. A question, if you don't mind. What do you think of the Duke of Oriflam? Mm, don't get me started. You build a life for yourself so oh, don't get noble. me started. I tell you, you've got to hand it all over to him. If he thinks his name and his chains give him the right to empty our purses, he's in for a rude awakening. We'll do whatever it takes to keep what's ours. Whatever it takes. Well, the people seem united enough. What about the soldiers? Yeah, it's not faster, but I feel like it is. You know? Yeah, I know. I want it to be. We all do, buddy. And you're just gonna fall into line. Fall into these. Well, excuse me, do you have a moment? I wondered if you'd mind sharing your thoughts on the Duke of Oriflam. Well, <laughs> he's made a lot of enemies coming in the way he did. I mean, look around us. You can see the state the realm's in. The traders might not like having the screws put on them, but if they volunteered a few more of their hard-earned gill before things got bad, maybe they wouldn't have to. I think the Duke's got a point when he says rebuilding the Empire is the best way of making sure we're all protected. And if that means people who don't know one end of a sword from another have to make way for those who do, well, that's just how it goes. Hmm. Ugh. That's not a good sign, is it? Yeah. We already have a leader in the dame. One at a time now. We don't have much for everyone. But the dame had us empty the bales larders to see these poor souls fed. Because that is what we do. You. You're the one who was talking to his eminence. On the dame's behalf, yes. I was trying to persuade him not to take the people's goodwill for granted, but it seems my words fell on deaf ears. What do you think of his plans? I'm a soldier, mate. He tells me what to do, not the other way round. Listen, I've got nothing but respect for the dame, but I've got a family to look after. That's where my loyalties lie. Not with a town or the empire, but with my wife and children. If the Duke can get us some men and the equipment gotcha. we need to fight off those blue skinned bastards, I don't care how he does it. Yeah, it is kind of interesting because this isn't a prospering society that a rich person is coming in to, to steal from the poor to make richer. This is a, 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 the, a the last remaining bastion of a town literally physically on the brink of armageddon like you can see yeah the, you see those blue clouds out there Th that's armageddon those are the armageddon there it is it's right They're there right there within eye shot so like they kind of do have a point and i kind of yeah. love this quest because of that it's not just as simple as eat the rich which i was kind of leaning you into earlier on in the same way that like 
Aaron spends all of fucking sh uh, Shadow of Colossus. Shadow of Colossus. You know exactly what I'm going with. I fucking love yeah. that Aaron did that to Dan. It's such a terrible thing. Man, isn't Agra such a great horse? Yeah, he is. He's such. I love him so much. Neck minute. Or like the the thing he did uh, during the. Zelda, I Ocarina of Time. Yeah. Ocarina of Time. Yeah. yeah, I like how we both both we knew <laughs> <laughs> all with well, this one was an accident, but with Monica. Monica? <laughs> yeah. The robot boy. Yeah. Dude. Oh. Ugh, I'm so I'm so totally a girl. Ugh, yeah. Bro. Bro. Plans to turn this town into bro. some sort of fortress. Do you think that's a good idea? It's not for me to say. All I know is that unless the Emperor orders me otherwise, his eminence's word is law. Look, no one likes all these taxes and tariffs, but empires don't come for free. Once Sandbrack is back on her feet, we'll all reap the benefits. Yeah, that's the thing, right? When there's no longer Armageddon at the door, traders probably won't have to worry about this. Like, giving up a huge chunk of their livelihood to fund an actual empire. Yeah. If they still is. are at that point, that's when we can start rolling heads. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A whole day. <laughs> but yeah, like, look, you can see it. You can see the Armageddon. You can see the apocalypse just over there. Those enemies are like basically in it. Yeah. Like right over there. Be nice if we have some bigger, chunkier walls for the, than the. Come back. Than the ones that we have. Yeah. Captain, do you have a moment? For you, certainly. Clive, wasn't it? Thank you for last time. How can I help you? I wanted to ask you about the Duke of Oriflam. Do you intend to go along with his plan? But to tell you the truth, I'm in two minds. Let me guess. One of the minds is the trader's opinion, and the other one is the soldier's opinion. Yeah. It's my sworn duty as a captain of the Imperial Army to obey his orders. But I can't say I agree with him. Philippe, I remember you saying that you became a soldier to protect the people you loved. The dame included. That's right. I did. Well, she doesn't agree with the Duke's orders either. She thinks they could turn Northreach apart. And she's probably right. Thank you, Clive. I know what I need to do now. She often is. Protecting the people I love is what matters. It doesn't matter how. I just like that a lot of Final Fantasy quests so I better go. are a little bit more nuanced, and in some cases a lot more nuanced than just bad guy obviously bad, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It seems Philip wants to do the right thing at least. I expect Isabel will be pleased. At least that. it's not like Nothing in else. uh twelve, where there clearly was nuance, but they just decided to make it unnuanced. Yeah, right. What do you think? After all, Vane did nothing wrong. That's another thing we can have on nothing the news wrong. read, the newscast thing. Just Vane did nothing wrong. Vane Solidor did nothing wrong. Yeah. Vain for president, 2024. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Clive, how did you Just fall? saying you did nothing wrong. I have no idea what his policies you? are. I was, but... So Northreach is to be a fortress after all. Well, it will certainly help to hold back the thralls. There's no denying that. Though I doubt it will come as much consolation to the townspeople whose worldly goods are confiscated to pay for it. They deserve to be heard, Clive. To have a say in this new empire the Duke means to build. Sadly, so well, I agree with you. Obedience more than their opinions. Yeah, she got a little he forceful there. The authority of the state. I fear he sees the people as mere pawns on his chessboard to be sacrificed for the greater good. Needless to say, they themselves are of a different opinion, and would rather their destinies were in your hands. The soldiers, meanwhile, are content to follow their orders. And not just because of the Duke's rank. 
but because of his vision. So, you know how Clive just summarised what everyone's opinions were? Yeah. This quest also did the, well, here's everything I know, fade out to black, fade into black thing. It did yeah. both. It just... So she's like, why did you just say the exact same thing twice? Yeah. Or worse, why did you say here's what we need to know and then just stood there for a while and did nothing? Sorry, I blacked out for a second. I haven't had a lot of iron in my diet. I, uh, I don't think he's eaten anything in the past I 15 I years. I dare say I I'm hungry. And I haven't ashes. slept in, uh, since I got almost that killed by Barnabas. And that didn't really count as sleep. What happened to your uniform? I handed it in, along with my resignation. Told the lads I wished them well, but that I owe it to those I love to call it a day. But why? Because I realized what really matters to me. Not following some nobleman's orders for the sake of it, but protecting what I, I care about. Well. Protecting Northreach. I honestly don't know when those monsters will return, but I'm certain they're not finished with us yet. And when they do come back, we need to be ready for them. We need to stand together, all of us. And with you to lead us, my lady, I reckon we can do it. It was you who finally convinced me, Clive. Hmm. There's no point following orders if they go against everything you believe. Indeed. All of us. Standing together. That has always been Northreach's best hope. And one which still lies within our grasp. We have only to turn our attentions to the true enemy. Thank you, Philippe, for showing me what I must do. Anything for you, milady. Speaking of uh, standing together... Oh, he's like in love with her. I borrowed a few her, huh? from the mm -hmm. vale to help keep watch around the town. I fear his eminence has loftier tasks in mind for the guard. Oh, here we go. I was doing some research on the bearer elements. So light aspected bearers actually have the healing powers. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, so are the are the healers in combat bearers? Yeah. Funky. Yeah, absolutely. Or do they have healing crystals? Do the light crystals? Well, no, because light crystals just produce light. No, they, I think they can produce healing. Hmm. Okay. Oh, shit. Let's continue. Yes, I would like Wouldn't to. The first time. I was trying to click on it, like, on <clears throat> the game, but it's like, that's not how that works. Yeah. There may be hope for Northreach yet. Especially with men like you and Philippe to champion our cause. For my part, she'll continue to work upon the Duke. In the stubborn belief that I might still tempt him into joining hands. I suspect I shall have to call upon your aid again. Until then, Clive. Until then. Yeah, the brand used to dehumanize and distinguish bearers is almost impossible to remove, and it is made with poison ink. This is all shit we know already. I'm just reading the wiki page. I think it's. I always like deep diving Final Fantasy games once I've, like, finished them. Mm hmm. All bear yeah, that's actually interesting. All bearers, no matter the nation that subjugates them, are branded with the same symbol and can be traded across borders. I never thought about that. But yeah. Like that's that's fucked up. It was the one thing that all the nations could agree on. Yeah. That these these people are property. Or with the others. Not interested. <laughs> this is the Rutherford quest, you know. Uh the Baron's like they just oh, Byron. Right, his, his Alfred wanted us to go do something for him. Yeah, we we were like 
his Alfred had his own Alfreds who were like basically scouting the realm for the dangers, but they got in trouble, and that's what we were doing. There was one in Delmechia as well, and I just, it was just a fight against some bandits. I did it. It's, uh. it's like not interested. It doesn't actually involve Uncle Byron at all, so it's not like yeah. interesting. And like, yeah. turns out that Alfred, without a Batman, not a very interesting character. Well, not true of actual Alfred. But... Really? Yeah. I don't know anything about fucking Batman. It depends on um, which Batman series you're going with, but generally he's like kind of a beloved character. Stop making that noise while I burn you. Oh, bearers are enslaved in spite of their power difference because they attempted to fight a war and lost, and their punishment for losing the war was to be enslaved. Yeah, but like, you still have superpowers. Weak ones. There may be more bandits nearby. But like more than a non-bearer. Yeah. You can still burn anyone who tries. Like fire bearers can still burn anyone who tries to enslave them to a crisp. Here, let me read this out. The bear of persecution take dates back to before the time of dominance and before the Continental Accord that codifies the treatment of bearers as non-human. In ancient times, those able to use magic were known as the bearers of the blessing. They fought against oppression, and the war that became known as the Deluge of Blood took place. What a fucking metal name for a war, right? All right. I bet more children would be interested in World War II if it was called the Deluge of Blood. And like, that's saying something because World War II is super interesting to children. Um, in the beginning of the... Oh no, the magic users lost and the bearers have been enslaved ever since. In the beginning of the modern cal calendar, bearers treatment was codified in the... Also, continent. how did the magic users lose? Uh, quantity. Yeah, right. They are a minority, numerically speaking. It'd be like if Which we took every... Sorry? Which side of the dominance fight on? Before the time of the dominance. Early dominance. Before the time of the dominance. Before. Yeah. The bear of persecution dates back to before the time the of the dominance. The fact that dominance. there is a time of before the time of the dominance is interesting. Very interesting, yeah. This one. Unlike the I other Final Fantasy games, I don't... Uh, I don't think it says that. Well, because, like... So did... Which came first, bearer of the crystal? I can't really talk about that, because that is spoilers. Well, because I'm thinking about it now because of the way that this, like, wiki is talking Wiki about page it. that I have yet to finish reading. Yeah, maybe you should stop reading it, because it might, <laughs> you know? No, I... Because now I'm thinking about, like... I've read it, i yet to finish reading out loud. Right. I was just saying that now I'm thinking of, like, I had just kind of assumed that the idea of, like, bearers and dominance and the crystals have just been around all, like, the whole time, basically. But, like, the idea that dominance weren't always a thing... Yeah. Now I'm wondering, like, in the beginning, did the dominance come with crystals? In the beginning of the modern calendar, Bearer's treatment was codified in the Continental Accord and they came to be marked with the poisoning tattoo. When dominance arrived in the world, it became impertinent to separate them from Bearer's lest they would side with them and repeat the war. And dominance, though not much different from Bearer's apart from their ability to prime, became heralded as heavenly messengers. That's an ally, Chocobo. I was looking at... <laughs> Just... <laughs> Poor Quinton's Chocobo, murdered by some random person. 
<laughs> anyway, this is the, the Quentin thing. Like, he didn't know that he was walking into a group of people that's, like, way, way more powerful than, than him and a few bearers. He thought it was just some dude. Anyway, look at all these bodies. Unfortunately, you took way too long to get here. <laughs> Let the bodies hit the floor. Am I right? You will be inlaid up on the statue. Yeah, it's my favorite. Quinton, are you all right? No. Do I fucking look all right, mate? I am alive. Which is more than I can say for my comrades. They followed me without question all the way here. And they died for nothing. And I've just been standing here for an hour. Bearers first appeared in Valisthea around 950 years ago. This hmm. must be the guard dog, Quinton. Oh, that's fairly recent. It's I'll hold not. it off. You go. But. Like, so dominance hasn't been nothing. around that long either, huh? Maybe yeah. For you. Don't let their sacrifice be in vain. I won't. Like. Come on. <laughs> Look, I'm not gonna talk too bad about Quinton, but he's kind of a dad bod wearing a fucking apron. That's not a very intimidating figure. Like, if that kind of guy came in to the room to kill you, you would not be, like, intimidated at first until he pulled out, like, something that clearly looked like he was gonna kill you with. Like a fucking yeah. cleaver. But especially he had, like... I'd, I'd be wondering if he came in to complain about me turning the thermostat up. First. Yeah. Then I'd be like, oh, is he gonna kill me? Yeah. Me when I look in the mirror. Make that joke makes sense to me. Mm. My god, the fact that this thing can get up for two seconds and then immediately have it stagger bar cut in half again because I use that fucking lightning ability that places a little floating crystal. It is so fucking good. I think it's the best ability in this game. Honestly. Yeah. Like, it's cut most of the fights that I've been doing against these enemies in single player down by, like, half. Because every single other ability I'm using is the same ability that I did in single player, except I'm using that crystal instead of another earth ability. Did you use that crystal before you got the earth ability? No. If only we'd arrived earlier, Aretha. It wouldn't have made a difference. When I did the quest in single player, I literally got here immediately. Is it over? This is. He wept and begged for mercy. And I cut him from ear to ear. Just as I dreamed of doing so all these now? years. All my plans. Building a haven in Lostwing. Freeing bearers from their chains and recruiting them to my cause. It was all for this. But what is this? Justice. Is you cutting a man from ear to ear? My faithful comrades. Is. All those lives lost. So that I might take another. Quinton. Master Quinton! Oh, thank Grieger you're safe. Huh? You. You're alive. That's interesting. I'm still reading this thing. I've gone onto the Dominance wiki page. Dominance mm -hmm. are treated differently depending on the country of which they belong, and several Dominance, Shiva, Titan, Bahamut, and the Phoenix, hold high positions in their home nations. Shiva the... didn't. What? Yes, she did. she did. The Iron Kingdom is not Shiva's home nation. The Northern Mountains are. They're covered in light They didn't now. know she was a Dominant when she was at Rosaria, did, did they? No, Rosaria is not the Northern Mountains. 
the northern mountains are an area we don't get to go to in this game because they're covered in blight now but the northern mountains are where shiva come from well, they're talking about just shiva in general yeah not not jill, not jill. yeah shiva in general in the same way that okay. yeah yeah shiva comes from the northern mountains jill comes from uh sandbrek but that's the confusing part because the very next sentence is the dominance of Shiva and the Phoenix always appear in the royal families of their countries of origin. So implying that Jill is... She's definitely not. She's a Sambrakian. Well, perhaps it's like a Dion situation. Yeah. She had one Sambrakian parent. And a little fling from the North Mountains. Oh no! No, I'm wrong! Jill is not a Sandbrekian. She's a princess okay. from the Northern Territories! She became a ward of Rosaria at a young age after the Archduke of Rosaria ended her homeland's raids. Do you think this was, like, stated at any point during all the story that we complained about not being interesting? No. Because I paid attention even when it wasn't wasn't interesting. I can't believe she has an interesting thing about her and she just hasn't told us. Or doesn't know. <laughs> no, she knows. Because, like, I did know that she was a ward of Rosaria after, uh, after the Archduke, like, helped the like kingdom i just thought that was sam Breck. but i guess that the northern territories were not totally enshrouded by blight when clive was a child and now they are i need to check the map after this maybe they're not fully enshrouded by blight yet and maybe that's <gasps> one of the dlc locations that could be cool mm. That could be cool because I'm already I'm already theory crafting that one of the DLCs is just going to be Leviathan getting Leviathan's powers like moves you know. All right. Here's my next question then. Mm -hmm. So are you? Why isn't Bahamut uh, listed so... in the ones that are her, 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 like list uh, as well? That's the other thing that I'm confused about. My question is, uh, so you wrote there that the that Shiva's dominant is always a royal from that family line, yeah. right? Do they know that in world? Because then I'm thinking like they know Clive that had no reason not to figure that if he knew that Jill was a princess from the Northern Kingdom. I don't think so. It seems like the ability to awaken a Zomon has always had to do with ancestry being descendants of a certain ancient tribes, whose descendants have now dispersed. But in some cases, like the Phoenix, the tribe amongst which its dominance appeared was preserved by coming the Ducal Ros Rosfield family. Yeah, like some, some traditions end up being kept alive longer than others. So like the preservation of a bloodline some cases might be able to be preserved like with rosaria or um the northern family line um of shiva's well until now anyway yeah um but sometimes it just gets dispersed and you end up with like fucking randos becoming it like sid who's not really related to like that we know of well he has to be obviously right and remember how honestly if if his parent is anything like him i'm not surprised that bloodline got dispersed yeah right does that be mid probably be the next lightning dominant not probably because i think it's could be generations apart after all joshua rosfield of rosario is the dominant of the phoenix and the previous one was his grandfather so it skipped Duke Elwin. And it skipped uh, Clive, too, so it's not even like a firstborn thing. Yeah, but Clive got a frit, so Clive's a bit of a special case. I just don't count Clive in this sort of thing, because he's... Yeah. But, like, it, skipping his dad is interesting. Yeah, it's not didn't, a one-to-one. Didn't his one -one. mom bring that up when she was talking about 
purity of bloodlines yeah. and all the other Nazi yes. shit she talked about. Well, he brought it up because she was bringing up how Clive is useless is because he isn't Phoenix. And Elwyn was like, yeah, I'm not the Phoenix and I'm the fucking Duke. And she's like, yeah, well, your dick is big and I'm on it. So, like, that's different. Yeah, but you're in front of me, so I have to lie. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm so sorry. I, I tried to warn you about that, that thing. And I hate to say it, but there's more bad news. It's Lost Wing. It's been flooded. What? Uh oh, spaghetti. -o. Well, shit. Damn it. Lost wing. My lost wing. And this dude's I just having a terrible here. day. They must have. Stolen in after we left, just before the flood struck. What if there are still people in there? Quinton! Oh my god! We're about to lose another one, aren't we? This is a guy who's got nothing to lose. I don't blame him. Quinton's not going to last long in there. Come on, Torval. We need to make this quick. Be yeah. The specific question of what came first, the crystals or bearers, that's a spoiler, and I'm not going to talk about that. But, like, everything else we've talked about so far doesn't actually get brought up in any main quest, so I had no problem talking about it. You're right. New enemies approach. You hear the, um, when the new enemies approach thing, you hear the Genshin sound for when reinforcements arrive. No, actually, when I see new enemies approach, I get a much deeper childhood memory of the sound Smash Brothers makes when you finish a campaign and haven't unlocked all the characters. And so it's like a new challenger approaches. Ah. That's what I hear. Thank you. And because Genshin makes its own sound, I don't hear it with Genshin, which is weird. But yeah, um, I can't remember if I skipped this quest because it wasn't super interesting, uh, or if we haven't even done it yet, but there is a quest where we ask Harpocrates about, and I refuse to fucking call them tomes, by the way, in the same way that, like... I think it's a cute name. I think it's a cute name as well, but to me, it's like... There's like a, f a very fake, uh, one of those fake Tumblr feel-good story style things. Like, it's definitely fake. But it's like, uh, where it's like, uh, someone had a friend who's like, or it could even be from a fucking show, I can't remember. Someone had a friend who was like, not fucking white, right? And so they're like, like, another person asked them, like, what their name was, and they gave like a very white answer. But like, they were like that like, like it wasn't actually their name and they just didn't like telling people their real name because no one fucking could pronounce it properly and then right. the one friend made the effort to pronounce it properly and it made them feel way better about themselves because it's like i don't know why you would say it's a fake feel good story lots of people do that no the one that i saw like it's a real thing that definitely happens but like the context in which i saw it was not it was like a fucking like a, get back to it was either like something in a show. Oh dear. Quinton, Quinton, look at me. Thank the thunder. He hasn't turned. I'm going to get you out of here. And like for me, like that's the same thing. I don't like calling uh, Hippocrates by tomes just because Hippocrates isn't is a hard name to pronounce. You know what I mean? Yeah. The difference, I would say, is because, uh, I don't not call him Marpocrates because it's a hard name to pronounce. I just think Tomes is a cute nickname. Anyway, I can't remember if this is a quest that we have done yet and I skipped because overall it wasn't super interesting. 
or if we haven't even gotten it yet. But we also ask uh, Harpocrates at some point uh, about the origin of uh, uh, Torgal. And like we learn that he's oh, like that. he's a frost wolf from the north, who and he's like closer related, closer attached to Jill than he is to Clive. Even as a puppy, he was like always Jill's dog, not Clive's necessarily. Ooh. And like the stories are about an old frost wolf that used to accompany what could uh, narratively or theoretically be considered as the first, uh, like yeah, the queen of the snows. to live for um with that old frost whip being the baptized fenrir don't try telling me you only uh, fenrir you could get revenge mm -hmm. we're more than that to you and we fenrir <laughs> i i thought you weren't coming back but i prayed and i prayed and you did there's got to be a reason for that right can't we just go back to how it was you know you looking after us all your work ain't over yet master quinton we believed that you were the right man to lead us and we still do your village may be lost but it seems your people aren't so long as you remain to guide them but why after what i why would anyone follow me because we're family aren't we family yeah and all our comrades who went with you they felt the same lost wing weren't just a village it was all of us it was and as long as we're still here it is too we can start again build a new lost wing right here in the bales a fresh start um. One life ends, and another begins. Why just a village? We could build towns. A nation, even. What's to stop us? That's the Master Quinton we know. Please, I am nobody's master. Quinton will suffice. After all, we are family. This voice is still so boring, though. Yeah. Permit me to withdraw my request. I will no longer be needing you up in looking after my people. I'll pretend you never asked. But you must be rewarded for your efforts on our behalf. You saved my life twice over. And more besides. A bottle or two of your finest red will suffice. Of course. Nothing but the best. And I have a feeling that this year's vintage will be the finest yet. If you don't mind waiting, that is. I look forward to it. Yay. There you go. Yay. Um, what else is there to do in this region? Wow, if I'm, I am <coughs> slowly clearing up these goddamn side quests. I believe in you. Oh my god, <laughs> how many fucking... <clears throat> All right.
Um, pop out another Reddit post for us. Yeah. Just a moment. I'll pause my recording. The whole village is turned. No, the whole village is turned. Okay, my the asshole for belittling my sister and saying she didn't demand her husband to make it. Or the baby in the middle of the night. Did you get your free judgments on this one? Yeah. Alright. My husband and I, 29 male, 27 male, so both male, uh, went through the surrogacy process and had our son four months ago. We were thrilled when my sister, 31 female, announced her pregnancy and we found out we would be having children very near the same time. Our niece is bo was born a little over two months after our son. My situation and my sisters closely mirror each other. Our husbands both work typical 9 to 5 with a 30 to 45 minute commute. My sister is a stay at home mom and I do freelance work from home. For the first two weeks after our son was born, the first of which my husband took off of work, we would both take partial night shift. Once I felt like I had some of the bearing, my bearings from parenthood, I offered to take over completely on weeknights while he does mornings before work and weekend. It's a collaborative process that the breakdown of parenting just made, uh, just makes sense to me. Uh, it's a collaborative process, and that breakdown of parenting just makes sense to me. Yeah, that makes sense my to husband, me as well. My husband was the one leaving our work to home, uh, our home to work every day, and he was the one who had to be up by a specific time and make me make a drive. At four months, we no longer have this obstacle anymore. And to be honest, I kind of miss that sweet, quiet bonding time when those extra night feeds provide provided now that he's settled into a nice sleep schedule and usually only wakes up once. Still, I think we got it down to an almost perfect science before we exited the newborn stage. My sister, on the other hand, is very much still in that phase and struggling. This has been a recurring problem for her from the beginning. She's been coming to me saying she's scared of going, oh, she's, she's scared she's gonna fall asleep holding the baby, that her husband won't help her with the night, etc. I tried giving her tips since I've been through it. I suggested she let her partner take over in the evenings, 6 to 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. She can go to bed early and catch a few more hours, nap on the baby nap, etc. She shot down everything saying that wouldn't work for them and that she just needed her partner to do some of the night feeding. I reminded her that her husband is one of the, the one commuting in the mornings and falling asleep while driving is a very real possibility and that yeah. I had lived through it and so could she. I then offered to watch her daughter for a few days so she could catch up on sleep. She took major offense to both of these things. She said I was belittling her experience and acting like I was a better parent. She said I couldn't truly empathize with her and give her valuable tips and she was pregnant and I hadn't. And that me offering to watch my niece just felt like me saying she needed help raising her own daughter. My intentions were definitely not malicious and I need some outside perspective here. Am I the asshole? No. Edit. I'm a man. Saw some people calling me a woman in the comments. Just wanted to clarify. Yeah, not an asshole. Absolutely not. And they weren't belittling either. Absolutely. No. A hundred percent on the other one. I don't think she's being an asshole out of malice, though. I think she's very clearly just extremely stressed. Right? But... No, I don't think OP is being an asshole at all. Tyler? Yeah? Waiting for your response? I disagree. Why? Because he keeps saying I've been through it as if, like, because I, I get he means he's been through having a child, like just having one, like a baby in that stage, but like, giving birth and recovering from pregnancy and postpartum Postpartum anything can be absolute hell. No holding back. And so having someone who did not go through that be like, oh, I went through and I was fine, let me help you, can be That's not what they're saying. When you're struggling. I don't think that's what they're saying at all. What OP is saying? Yeah. Well, they're... OP's literally saying, I lived through it and spoke in you. No, like, through you... the... Through the, the specific thing that they're talking about, not literally having a child. Yeah, but like the... 
part of the reason for her struggling so much more could be attributed to the fact that her body is still in recovery from giving birth and all that. And if her husband's not helping, then that's a problem she needs to resolve with her husband. Admittedly. Which is also something that OP said. Well, OP is not saying that she needs to resolve the problem with her husband. She's just saying you need to deal with it because your husband has more important stuff to do, basically. No, one of their suggestions is also to get the husband to do more. No. I swear it was. That's all of them. A wine can I... Uh, suggested let her partner take over in the evening. Yeah. So she can go to bed early. Yeah. But she needs help with the night feedings. That's what she's saying she needs help with. Okay, but not necessarily that either. would help with the night feedings, because then she'd be more alert. That is literally a, a piece of advice for that. Assuming she's still here. If you sleep more, you're less tired. I know that a rule doesn't affect me because I have sleep apnea, <laughs> but like that is the rule for everyone else, Tyler. Like they did, he did give advice that was like, get your husband to help more. Like, I definitely don't- it could be my, like, autistic, specific, logical thing happening, but, like, he- it, it doesn't seem like in any way he's saying that he's had a baby before out of his fucking dick and he knows what it's like for the body to yeah, give birth. but, like, I'm saying that, uh, he- he is suggesting that his experience with the first- the- that- beginning time of having a child should be emblematic of what her experience would be like i don't think that's what he's saying, he's saying like is he saying i live through it and you can too as if her experience wouldn't be like several times more difficult because of her recovery the period of recovery she has to make is he literally saying that word for word like, like the literal sentence here says i live through it and so can you yeah, it being the scheduling of who's taking care of the baby, right? Yes, but that scheduling is made more difficult by the fact that she is still in recovery. Mm. Like, everything about her situation is still going to be colored by the fact that she's in recovery from a huge medical thing that just happened. Oh, if you're curious about this quest, Doris is like the leader of the Curse Breakers at our base, and mm -hmm. essentially she used to be like a Willodian, uh, she used to be in this game's version of the House of the Hearth, basically. And the person she was talking to was her Alicino. She's been doing the what? She's in this game's version of the House of the Hearth. Oh. And she was talking to her version Zalchino, but as an adult, after having run away from that incredibly like that situation, because it was also abusive. Clunky. Yeah, like she's like orphanage of highly trained assassins, but she uh -huh. ran away because she didn't want to be an assassin. You know, I've been getting some mixed signals about Arlecchino from. Uh, the voice lines of like Linny and Lynette and Fremenay. That's it's probably the that's probably the point. Take note of like who's saying that they like her and who's saying they dislike her, because like it could be oh, even like from within. It, I don't think any of them say they like necessarily like or dislike her. Like specifically, just the kind of the. Uh, Yes, okay, Yay, now that you've finished her. hair splitting, take note of who's saying that they like her and dislike her indirectly, because it could be an indicator of, like, true power or potential. Mm -hmm. 
if like if I can base anything off of how this game does that idea because like the reason why Doris is still in contact with the her version of Alakino or Alachino is because Doris is like the best of the best in her little orphanage assassins. Orphanage of assassins. Mm -hmm. So like I'm saying like whichever of them like has the least negative shit to say and expresses that they were treated well or shit like that, they might like mm -hmm. be the most powerful of the three. Like yeah, like, but, like <sighs> Go on. I was just gonna start and say the thing because I got what you were saying. Um, but my my thing about the the, the thing you called hair splitting was that I'm getting mixed signals from within the same person. Welcome to try. That. Yep, that's how abuse happens. Because like um, Remine in one line will talk about how uh, father doesn't like when he cries, so he keeps it in, and then he cries at the bottom of the ocean where no one can see him, right? But then in another line, we'll talk about how he, uh, how much nicer father has been to him and every other child in the whole earth than the previous director was. Those are not contradictory. And that how like, uh, how like he sees the the first as his family because they've been like, uh, family form and stuff. So it's like, hmm. Those two it, aren't. Just way those two aren't. Her, technically contradictory Tyler yeah but like if the you way go he from a zero behavior just seems like huh maybe not so bad the crying if you... thing if you go you from a... that. Tyler if you go from a zero out of ten to a three out of ten you're gonna say the three out of ten is better right right so like if all Arlecchino does is dislike it when they cry, that's still better than, like, regular beatings and no food, for example. Right. You know what I mean? Like... Everyone, he never says what he didn't like about the previous director. Yeah, exactly. He says, he says something about how the previous director um, sort of raised them all with this belief that they should always be ready to die for the family. And when Arlecchino came in, her philosophy was more, every single one of you is important as an individual and should uh like work to be the best version of yourself not and not necessarily throw your life away for the hearth because you were important yeah that sounds like a zero out of three turning to something that is much higher than a zero out of, uh, out of ten sorry turning to something that is much higher than a zero out of ten to me even if alakino still has their own fucked up like ways of like controlling them like it still sounds like that's a step up yeah. At least to me. <laughs> How long have we been going? A while. We've been going for four hours. Four fucking hours. We have done no story. Come back. No. Fuck off. Oh, hey, Blackthorn. Gentlemen. I see you both made it home in one piece. Yeah, well, we didn't want to outstay our welcome. The whole village turned out for a go on the bellows after you left. Everyone except Zoltan has. Didn't see I nor air of him. Ah, oh, but that reminds me. I have something for you. Oh no. We're showing him something again, Tyler. No, stop showing him Don't things. How'd you come by this? And you're sure he wanted me to have it? I'm sure. He didn't say so, but I think he wants to forgive you. Imagine that. Yeah. Uh, you know I can never leave this place, don't you? Every time you put on mail, you and the curse breakers are trusting me with your lives. There's no greater honor for a smith than that. 
I'm not about to go crawling back to Zoltan for forgiveness. The only armor pieces I equip from Blackthorn are a belt and gloves. <laughs> That's the only armor. And if that helps save oh. even a single life, then it'll have my gratitude. What was it you said he called me? Huh? A genius. And he spent sleepless night trying to copy me, did he? Sounds like I better get to work. Ooh. I've got a reputation to uphold. It's good to see you back on form, Blackthorn. I don't know how you pair put up with me sometimes, but I'm grateful all the same. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, about to put Zoltan back in his place. I ain't got the art to tell him how similar they are. Stubborn bastards. A little healthy competition should be good for him. You're not wrong. Still, it's a shame him and Zoltan couldn't let bygones be bygones. No use grumbling about it now, though. Blackthorn's happy. Or as near to happy as he gets. Yeah. And that's good enough for me. Give me a sec. I have some kick-ass images to share with you. Yeah. These are on the uh the pages for the dominance for Final Fantasy uh sixteen. I don't like the stream is not gonna be able to see these, but I think these are really fucking cool. And I think you'll like them as well. And there's no spoilers because we've already seen all the dominance. Um, a minute now. Yeah, I'm getting all of them. I'm going to send them all in one go. Just fucking hold your horses, you fucking twonk. Have a look at those. He has a link for who drew it. It was on the wiki, unfortunately, not so unfortunately I don't. Oh, is it like official art then? I'm not sure. It could be. I assume if it's on the wiki it is, because like it'd be weird for the wiki not to do official art. But because I'm only sharing it with you, I'm my my proposition is it doesn't matter too much, because I'm not like sharing it online. Size. I'll send you the wiki page for Dominant. I've looked it over. It doesn't have anything spoilery. I think. I'm read some of these comments. You what? I'm gonna read some of these comments. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think of them? Full of, full of the art. Yeah. It's cool. I like the colors. I like the poses. I like little Josh. He's very cute. They all have very good silhouettes. Yeah. Like, that's my favorite part. Is like, because I, it's one of the things I really like looking at is the silhouettes of characters. So, Dion's. Clear this up one, one more time for me. Dion is the dominant of. Light. The, the god name. Bahamut. Bahamut. The element of light. Yes. Barnabas is the dominant, the dominant of, of Odin, the element of Odin. sword. Darkness. <laughs> <laughs> what do darkness bearers do? I couldn't find that. That's why I was on the wiki page. I couldn't find anything about darkness bearers. I couldn't even find like if... Darkness crystals? Yeah, I couldn't even find any uh, like... Exist like proof that they exist. So, thank you. Yeah. Is that it? Uh, hey, look what quest just activated after I finished Blacksmith Blues Three. No. 
<laughs> we just got a puppy! Let him have some time before we show him another thing. No! The quest is there because he's already seen it, Tyler. No! He's already seen it. This poor imposter syndrome blacksmith. We do not have enough time to start anything in the story, do we? I don't know. It's four hours in. I'm fairly certain I got an answer to that one already. But yeah, comments? comments full offense but yes you're the asshole your situations do not closely mirror each other her experience has been very different especially considering her body is still recovering from pregnancy and giving birth which is painful and completely exhausting did she have a c-section or natural childbirth did she tear have stitches these details matter she could also be struggling with pbd something you absolutely do not have to worry about i don't say this to belittle you i say this because you're belittling her you are turning this into a competition. It's clear you, clear you do think you're the better mother. How arrogant. It's normal to expect your husband to help with night feedings. Just because you have not needed that help, likely because you didn't give birth and have absolutely no idea what that's like, does not mean you get to pass judgment on your sister for having different needs. Every baby is different. Even siblings with the same parents can be entirely different. If you actually want to help her, stop comparing yourselves and stop acting like she's doing something wrong. Her baby and her schedule and her life are not yours, and they are not like yours. Stop that. Be supportive and kind. Be a good sister. And then edit. Oh, MFG, the fact that you're actually a man makes this so much worse. Where did you get the audacity? Because you took too much. I like that last bit. Where did you get the audacity? You took way too much. It was on sale. I bought it bulk at Costco. Yep. <laughs> um, I've just accept. I've just hit the to accept the quest. Yeah. About Dravosh, Blackthorn's old haunt, with the forge and all that. Well, anyway, the mines just down the road from there are spewing out ether like no one's business. And the village. I could never spew out ether like that. <laughs> exactly. Every creature in the area is either turned or on the way to turning, apparently. Zoltan and the others are living on borrowed time. They need help and quick. Dorish sent a few curse breakers to keep an eye on things, but there's only so much a couple of scouts can do. Except get eaten. If something ain't done soon, the old place will be overrun. Can't right now. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I won't let that happen. Didn't think you would. Does Blackthorn know? I thought it might be better if he didn't. He'd only do something stupid. You reckon we should tell him? No. Should we? It's better this way. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> they finally decided yeah, not yeah, to yeah, show yeah, Blackthorn. Yeah, so I'm off. I'll see you in trouble. <laughs> uh. There's something very funny about the evolution of that questline being, let's not show Blackthorn this thing. <laughs> it's Violated for the best. God, it's for the best. You're the asshole, but gold star for mansplaining newborn parenting to your sister who's not even six months postpartum. How the fuck do you think you have similar experiences? you have babies around the same age your sister went through a major medical physical trauma while having having her baby and in the aftermath is likely dealing with a massive hormone dump on top of being a first-time parent you should apologize to your sister and if you're at all close with her husband encourage him to parent better who are you talking to now what Just about handing in a quest is that the guy who fondled your sack yeah now he just gave us a bigger one Nice. If only every sack fondle could end with a bigger sack. Now my sack can hold so many potions. Oh, let's add that to the quotes. So, 
Yeah? <laughs> I don't know. Is that funny? <laughs> uh... I think it's pretty good. We haven't had a cart in a while. Slap it in the Discord, why not? Just... Small update. There's an update on this pose. Oh boy. Are you gonna read the update? I'm like... It read looks it. like a link, so I'm trying to click it, but it's not. Yeah. What do you mean it's a link? Um, is it not just text? Is it not? Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, one of the, it, it linked me to a, a comment, like in a reply thread. Oh. Okay. So. Just retype um, the comment, you lazy. Uh, let's see. Do read the comments that they're replying to? As well? You go down a little thread. Well, you can't say update and then go silent! I- I- asking, do you want me to read the comments that they're replying to? Oh, you were asking me a question? No. Yes. Is it an update or is it a reply? I'm confused! I think they update a bit in the reply. Is the thing, because the reply seems real long. Read the update, and then if it, if I don't if I have questions, I'll get you to read the reply to it. We'll go backwards. Our surrogate and her husband are close friends of ours, and we were closely kept in the loop for every part of the pregnancy. Once our son was born, we gave them a gift basket that included a lot of items women in my life and online said were helpful during postpartum. Still, it wasn't a topic that we discussed in depth very often. We would ask how she was feeling, she would explain a little bit to us, and then we would move on from the topic for her own comfort. Uh... She's someone who, unlike a lot of people in the comments, loves being pregnant and, to my knowledge, had an easy postpartum journey as well. Still, I was ignorant on the recovery thing. I knew two months out that everything wasn't perfect, but I've learned from this comment section that it can take up to a year for a person's body to, recovery, preg for, to recover. Pregnancy, yeah. childbirth, and childcare on top of it sounds like an incredibly exhausting process for sure. I know I've made a lot of people angry with this post, but I genuinely want people to know that I never meant to offend them or my sister. I didn't mean to discount those who had ex who experienced pregnancy. I've actually talked to my sister on the phone since making this post, and we hashed it all out. I apologize for not taking the full scope of her feelings into account and for offering up solutions she didn't explicitly ask for. She accepted my apology, and she said that she was just really upset that day, and me not siding with her completely and not just letting her vent sent her over the edge. I'm going to do my best to be more mindful and supportive of her now. It's also clear to me that I won the baby lottery, and a lot of children don't sleep through the night for many more months, and sometimes years. I've always known we were lucky, but how easily he went down for sleeps and naps, but I didn't realize it was to this extent. I'm going to cherish it even more now and hope that this post doesn't bring us some bad karma when we come to a future baby number two being a terrible sleeper. Thank you for all the feedback, and sorry again for causing offense. Yeah, like I said, I didn't take it as a competition. I didn't, like, it didn't read that way to me at all. And people in the comments saying it was, I completely disagree with that. Like, to me, it just genuinely sounded like he was trying to give advice. Do you have siblings? Do I have what? Do you have siblings? No. Thank goodness they can get home. Yeah. What do you mean? I... I also picked up on the competition vibes. I think it might be a... sort of sibling thing. So even if you're just offering advice, especially from a younger sibling to an older sibling, because the offering advice so sort of comes off like the, today. well, I'm doing better, so I'm in the position to offer advice to you. I offer advice even though I'm doing worse. That has nothing to do with it. It can come off that way, though. I'm fucking it heteronormative, it can come off as bullshit. If I say something, I mean it. I hate that shit well, yes, so much. Well, yes, you do. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I hate that shit so much. 
If I say X, I don't mean Y. It doesn't come off as Z. My intentions are X. I legitimately hate that. It's probably the thing that I hate the most about, like, the translation issues between heteronormativity and, and, uh, not I hetero. No, I don't. Sorry. Fucking. What is it? Neurotypical. That's it. The fuck is heteronormative? It's the assumption that straight couples are the norm. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's my my least like part about like the translation issues between uh, neurodivergency and neurotypical. It's like when I say something and people are like, "Wow, I can't believe you meant this completely different thing," and I'm like, "No, I didn't. I meant the thing that I said explicitly and exactly." Uh, but I'll count right. out to the fact that I, I'm not a woman I, who's had pre uh, who's had a baby come out of my vagina as well. So I have no mm -hmm. idea what it's like to I, actually physically have a pregnancy. Right. I get the thing that you're saying, but I also get the idea of, like, to some extent, like, depending on what it is that you said and how it was taken all that, to some extent, it doesn't matter what you meant sometimes. Because, like... Even if you didn't mean for something to hurt, if it hurt, then it hurt, you know? I understand where you're coming from, but I've, like, had that happen so many times that the only life lesson I can take from this at this point is to either police myself extraneously for, like, every single individual person, or to just fucking deal with it. And I'm on the just fucking deal with it camp, because I can't. I can't, like sit there and micromanage every single little fucking thing I say. It's the, the classic autistic think before you speak bullshit. You should, but like it's used against people who are autistic to such a degree that it's like don't speak, basically. Mm. Whether this guy is autistic or not is another question. And this could definitely just be self-insertion at this point, but like the saying A and having it come across as B thing is like a, a personal, like, tick for me. Because, like, to me, if I wanted to insinuate that they were bad parents and I was better parents, I would just say that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it'd be a dickhead thing to say, but, like, at the mercy of fucking neurotypical ways of insulting people I would be at least at least be being upfront about it uh-huh what are you doing right now standing still eating food ah uh, but also we're probably gonna read the next one. well we're probably gonna end right because it's fucking late it's only midnight. I could go for another hour, probably. I'm eating ice cream right now. There's nothing left. There's not enough stuff left in the game to do for an hour, but too much story to do. Mm. So we're kind of in a tight position. Okay. Do you want to end stream and just hang out for an hour? We don't hang out off stream very often. Does us hanging out off stream have to be different than hanging out on stream? Are you gonna be different? Not necessarily. Okay. I could work on my drawing and not have to worry about falling falling silent for a bit. Thank goodness Sid made it home safely. Yeah, I don't see why not. I suppose you've got quite the tale to tell. Alright. You nice have you got quite the tale to tell? You for the I don't. She wants to bother you for the details, though. I don't fucking care what she wants. She can suck my dick! <laughs>